It being 635 on September 20th, 2023, the meeting of the Brockton Conservation Commission is called to order. This meeting is being conducted remotely in accordance with Governor Healy's open meeting provisions updated in March of 2023 to extend certain COVID-19 provisions until March 31st, 2025. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Conservation Commission utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software. If you wish to comment during a public input portion of the hearing, please use the raise your hand function to be addressed at the appropriate time. For those of you joining by phone only, please press a star nine to raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's webpage. All votes will be done by roll call to ensure count accuracy. <clears throat> and so we will begin with um, announcement, please, of the names of the commissioners that are present to determine uh, whether or not we have quorum. Beekler here. Clay here. Bird is here. Is, Lily, do I go before Lily? Map here. Okay, and Boris here. So quorum is established. Thank you. Um, for this evening, Lily, I believe you're going to be observing for one more evening. Is that correct? And then begin voting at the next meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, so my internet's a little unstable, but yes, I'll be observing. Okay, thank you. Okay, just a, a, a few announcements. Um, for the general public, there has been a change in meeting dates for the next few months because of holidays. Um, the next meeting will be on October 4th. Uh, that meeting will have to have paperwork filed by September 20th for any new applications. Uh, the next one will be November 15th with a file date of November 1. The third one is December 13th with a file date of November 29th. And finally, January 17th with a file date of January 3rd. So just take that into account and put it on your calendars, please. And also there have been some um, agenda items that have been continued to the October 4th meeting. Uh, those are number 13, 549 Copeland Street, Number 14, 10 Peckham Avenue. Number 15, 166 East Ashland. Number 16, 339 Quincy. And also there was a um, there was a legal notice that was not posted for 82 Ames. So that will not be heard this evening. Um, was there anything else, Kyle? Uh, no, that was it. Okay. Good job, thank you. Yep, so those will not be addressed on tonight's agenda. So if you are here to participate or um, to have any kind of input on those. Um, those will not be heard this evening. Okay, with that said, um, the first <clears throat> matter on the agenda would be um, the meeting minutes. I said, would everyone had a chance to read the minutes of the meeting from August 16th? Yes. Any changes, edits or anything? If not, then I would entertain a motion please to accept the minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes from August 8th, uh, 16th meeting. Could someone second, please? I second the motion. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote for uh, acceptance of the meetings, please. Beekler, aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Map, aye. And Boris, aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, the first. Item on the agenda would be a certificate of compliance for uh, property Grove Street gas main replacement. Um, it's a public utility project. Is someone here as an applicant to speak to that project? Yes, I see Rebecca. Uh, so I'm going to promote her to panelist. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Rebecca Weissman with SWCA Environmental. Hello. Hello. Um, did you need want a presentation for the certificate of compliance? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, not necessarily. Um, okay. uh, so, so I have already provided the agent report. Um, I didn't, just didn't know if you had anything to, to just kind of speak to the project. You can say that it's completed, um, you know, but it's kind of uh, all contained in the agent report too. So if you don't have anything to add, that's fine. I can just kind of take it from here. So it's up to you if you want to say anything. It was, yes, SWCA provided environmental compliance monitoring weekly throughout the construction time period and um, as well as after to confirm that the area has been restored. I know that uh, Mr. Holden has been out on the site and confirmed restoration so that the erosion controls could be removed. Thank you. Okay, Kyle? Um, yeah, as Rebecca said, I went out and, and confirmed uh, that the, the, the banks have been stabilized so they could remove the erosion control structures. That was a few months ago. Um, so after that, um, they've, they've uh, applied for this uh, certificate of compliance. I went back to the site. Everything still looks great. Um, so yeah, I see no reason that the commission couldn't issue a certificate of compliance for this project. Um, I did make one note in my agent report there that there's an ongoing condition. This is generally uh, applicable for all of our um, orders of condition is uh, orders of condition that, that basically states that um, no herbicides or pesticides should be used on the property. Um, I'm not sure if it was Rebecca, but someone from uh, SWCA Environmental uh, pointed out to me that they are not responsible for maintaining the roadways here. So that condition is not something that they can themselves can enforce. And, and I would agree, but uh, it's still in the order of conditions uh, anyway, but uh, we're not like going to hold them accountable for any herbicide use at the, at the site because it, it is a, a public roadway. What about for the, the initial plantings? Do you know if that can be prohibited for the initial plantings or not? Oh, certainly as part of the restoration process, you know, but but this is just uh, the the point was on, ongoing oh, after oh. we close out this order, um, they're not responsible for like this ongoing condition. So they're, they're not in charge of that area. Mm -hmm. And is that something that would be the city DPW that's in charge of, or? It... Uh, yeah, presumably, yeah, they would be the people that are in charge of maintaining the roadways in the city. Mm -hmm. So I, I can reach out to them and just make sure that they're aware generally of, of you know, not to use uh, those products around obvious resource areas like, like you know, river and stream crossings. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be great if you could do that. That would be sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Good. And so... I guess with that, commissioners, do you have any comments, any suggestions, any questions at all? I entertain a motion then to uh, issue a certificate of compliance for grocery gas main replacement. I make a motion uh, for a certificate of compliance to be issued for the Grove Street gas main replacement. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Equal aye. Play aye. Curtis aye. Map aye. And Boris aye. That motion carries. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, the next item on the agenda is also a certificate of compliance. This is for 47 Westwood Avenue. Strong Point Engineering, is someone here to represent? Um, I don't believe so. If, if someone is, please raise your hand, but I spoke to the applicant um, and the engineers over the past week. Um, and so I don't know that they're planning on uh, attending the meeting tonight, which is fine. So uh, this was the for the construction of a single family home at uh, 47 Westwood uh, Avenue. Um, the construction of the home is complete uh, and they've, they've seeded the, the yard. The, the yard has grown, it's kind of weedy, but it is stable. Um, so uh, I went out and uh, walked the site. Uh, the one outstanding uh, complaint that I had mentioned in my agent report was that the uh, silt fence and, and erosion controls were still in place on site. And the uh, order of conditions very specifically state that those need to be removed and uh, discarded appropriately somewhere off site. Um, so I communicated that with them and they were able to do that over uh, the beginning part of this week. I went out to the site yesterday and confirmed that uh, all of that had been removed. So um, at this point, I think we're uh, able to issue uh, the certificate of compliance. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions or anything? No? Okay, then I entertain a motion then to um, issue a certificate of compliance for 47 Westwood Avenue. Make a, motion. make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 47 Westwood Avenue. 
One second. Sorry, Laura. No worries. Second. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Play, aye. Curtis, aye. Map, aye. And Voris, aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda, number four, is an extension request um, for Oak Hill Way. Uh, let me see, is anyone here representing that applicant? Yes, there are a few people. I'm going to promote them. And if there's anyone else that I miss, please uh, raise your hand in uh, as an attendee and I can promote you. I think that may be it. That is. So we have Mr. Levy and Mr. Pogany who will be speaking, please. Yep. My name is Eric Levy, and I'm the owner of the property in partnership with Lou Tarantino, so Brockton resident. And uh, met with Kyle earlier in the week. We noticed uh, uh, a little washout between the retention basins. So we performed uh, corrective actions and have fixed those two areas that Kyle, you and I saw after a pretty unprecedented rain event. But uh, that has been tended to. Uh, I have no issues kind of complying with, with your recommendations to you know, make sure that any containers, empty containers, or there were some porta johns that were probably less than a hundred feet from the buffer zone. So we've already started moving those and should take less than a week to confirm that everything is outside of the hundred foot uh, buffer zone as required by the, uh, um, what you were asking there. I have not reached out to, uh, Meadowbrook or the erosion control company to see what their schedule is to, you know, replace. I think that was another recommendation that you made, Kyle, to replace the kind of dated uh, silt sock that has kind of gotten worn in, in several areas. So we're, we're open to do that. I don't have a, a sense on how quickly that can happen, but uh, we've begun the process. Um, Mr. Levy or Ms. Foden, I'm not sure who, um, could you just give us a brief history of the actual project and what it exactly is going on there? Yeah, so, we're, you know, this is what we call phase 1A. So it was basically building the road to enter the property. We had to come across a bridge and bring in water and sewer and, uh, you know, put up a retaining wall along the side. It's about a thousand feet of roadway that was constructed and then built. I'm sorry. To oh, it's breaking. Almost as part of two retention base. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's all. Um, can you hear me okay? That statement was better. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, sorry for the poor audio. But uh, so we basically building about a thousand feet of road and two retention basins as as part of our phase 1A. Um, all the water and sewer pipes and uh, catch basins are installed and we just have to do the final connection with the city at the end of Oak Hill Way. So that'll be something coordinated with DPW. We are waiting for the utility to uh, accept our work work requests for uh, power. So that's kind of the missing piece right now, uh, waiting for power. And um, that's kind of where we're at right now. We are working on full uh, plans, site plans with building uh, that we're going to present shortly, but we need to kind of get through this phase 1A first, which is, you know, the main entrance to the property with utilities. Mm -hmm. And what exactly is the wetland crossing? Is that, um, what is that constructed of? 
Uh, it was a pre-existing H20 bridge, and uh, we had to, you know, this was done a year, year and a half ago. We had to come under the stream there with uh, water and, and sewer and, and bring it out to the property. So that has all been completed and has been revegetated and stabilized. And uh, like I say, we just have to do the final interconnect with the city water and sewer on Oak Hill Way, which will be a live tap uh, coordinated with DPW. And what are the ultimate plans for the site? Um, industrial, I, you know, we have a vision of kind of a green industrial park and uh, Right now we're working on a 18,000 foot building that would go in between the two exist two ponds that are constructed and it's organics processing. So we would receive source separated organics and packaged food waste and it would go through a depackaging machine and then we would capture the organics in tanks and then that slurry of organics would be shipped to anaerobic digester to make green energy. We also uh, are doing a small scale leaf and yard waste composting operation there where we plan on bringing in some technology to accelerate the process and better control odors and uh, leachate, condensate, stormwater, all of that stuff. So we're kind of up to our eyeballs in the design engineering of all of that stuff to make sure any concerns that the town would have are all addressed. And I look forward to kind of presenting the whole plan, you know, to various people, you know, in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And that digester would be offsite, is that correct? Um, yes. Yeah, we don't have plans to build a digester. Yeah, the, the, the organic slurry would be shipped via tanker. Uh, right now, we're involved with a project uh, with the Greater Lawrence Sanitary District, which is the second largest wastewater treatment plant in Massachusetts. And they've had great results, this organic slurry to the back end of their wastewater cleaning process to the point that they now are producing all the energy they need to clean water up in the Greater Lawrence area. So it's a cutting edge, exciting project that uh, should be well received in Brockton. Um, Kyle, your report. Yeah, I have a couple things to add. Thank you, Eric. Um, so I've shared my screen here. So this is kind of uh, the, I just kind of want to talk through kind of what this, this shows here. So. Uh, this rectangle here is kind of outlining the phase one that we're currently uh, kind of working through. Um, and these are the two already constructed uh, stormwater basins. Those are, again, already installed. Uh, Eric had mentioned that this there was an 18,000 uh, square foot building uh, that they're planning. That, that's going to be in this footprint uh, right here. And then you can kind of see outside of that phase one area, a couple other buildings. Uh, this is where the, the other development on the site um, are, is, you know, outlined it to, to be eventually put. But currently we're just dealing with a phase one um, as part of this, uh, and this is outlined also in the order of conditions, um, we will be getting you know, phase two uh, and, and forward as we go forward with this project. So they, they, they'll, they eventually, when they finish with phase one, they will uh, uh, submit a phase two. Probably phase two will be the construction of that building within the, the, the phase one area. But then all subsequent development here, it, it's all kind of within jurisdiction. So um, they're just going to uh, come back with new plans for different portions of this project as they finish up with the things that they're currently working on. So uh, as Eric had mentioned, we're very close to being done with the phase one. We just have to run a couple, uh, just the electrical line. Um, but yeah, that's what this kind of map is. Um, Eric, do you have anything else about the map that you want to talk about? Um, no, no. All right, great, thanks. Commissioners, any questions? I 
actually, if you couldn't mind, uh, Kyle, would you mind putting the, the map back up in case there are questions about that? Sure. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Where is the waste coming from? Um, it would, you know, uh, my company, you know, Save That Stuff is a, is a collector of organics. We collect, you know, from, you know, Worcester on the west to Province Island on the south. Um, we're primarily located in Boston, uh, but we have a diverse group of customers, you know, for schools, universities, retail, restaurants, hotels, hospitals. And again, it's primarily source separated organics or expired packaged food that comes in on box trucks or trailers from places like Shaw's, Methuen, or, you know, different grocery distribution centers that have expired food that needs to get recycled. And um, uh, how are the roads going to be maintained uh, during like the winter months, the ice and snow? Will uh, they be sanded, yep. rock salt? Is there any um, possibility of that getting into um, the wetland? In terms of the, are you talking food waste or, or snow plowing? Snow plowing, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I haven't thought about it, but uh, I imagine just regular plowing is what we would do. I, we have loaders and bobcats and things like that. So plowing is an easy thing for us to control on our own on site. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I haven't thought about ice melt or rock salt or anything like that, but we'll certainly be sensitive to that considering we have pretty much wetlands on all sides of us. Mm -hmm. So it, um, duly noted. It does look, are you right abutting right against the wetlands? Where's the uh, 25? 30, um, yeah, right in there. Yeah, I think the, the blue line, uh, this dark blue line, um, I think is the the flagged wetland area. So uh, th th this is a we're this is a large site. We're zoomed out quite a ways. So I, I think the limit of work mark here is twenty five foot. Um, so just to put that kind of in perspective, so it, it looks like there's not a big gap, but you know it, it's it's not in a you know it's not it's not right up against the net wetland. There's there's going to be space there. Mm -hmm. that that crossover area looks like it was pretty tight there but... oh yeah i mean the, and this is you know okay. and, and awesome. so they yeah they they part of you know the the big part of this first phase was the construction of this road um you know and so they had to go through all the the, the you know the steps to, to kind of do that correctly here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so this was actually permitted quite a while ago right when was the um the original permit was issued right um, yeah, I've got that here, uh, Madam Chair. So the original order of conditions was just was issued on November first of twenty seventeen, and they uh, received an amendment uh, in twenty twenty one and uh, an extension in February of twenty twenty one. And then, what was that amendment for? Just to leave you, do you know what the amendment? Yeah, yeah, I don't even recall. To so be honest. in my yeah. agent report, I've got that uh, the amendment was uh, updated uh, to include plans for phase one. So I'm not sure what the original plan was, but I, I think that what they did is they parsed out different phases and that's what the amendment was. So this part of it was already it was already conditioned, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Right. So the commission isn't really um, uh, approving or denying the plans here because the plans right. have already kind of been approved in the past. Right. So we're just right. we're deciding if we're going to issue that extension. So it's not an amendment of any kind. The work is already going on. It's maintaining the same project as it as it was at that time. Is that correct? Only extending the time. Yeah, that's correct. 
That's my understanding. Is that correct, Mr. Levy, too? Let's yes. Wait. Okay. Commissioners, any questions at all? Oh, Ruby is not here this evening, is she? Is Ruby here? Is she on a different screen? Ruby yeah. Here. Nope, I'm here. No, okay. Thank you for sharing, Kyle. Sharing is caring. Does Does Kyle have any concerns? Um, yeah, so in my agent report, I outlined two kinds of uh, concerns that I had with this project. Um, Eric kind of spoke to both of them. So the first one was uh, they had some uh, recycling, like empty recycling, like big industrial size containers that were staged um, like within 100 feet of the wetland line. Um, and uh, that was something that was uh, per not permissible under the order of conditions. So I noted that. Um, and Eric has already uh, mentioned that they are willing to uh, to move those out outside of that that 100 foot boundary to the wetland. Um, and then additionally, um, I noted that the erosion control structures, like the, the current uh, silt sock that's in place, uh, is in pretty bad shape, and that needs to be replaced. And so they've already kind of spoken to that as well that they're uh, willing to to do that replacement. Um, and I've already kind of spoken to Joyce about this this next statement that I'm going to be making. Um, mm -hmm. We don't necessarily have to wait uh, to uh, to issue this extension until the erosion control is in place and replaced, uh, because uh, maintaining properly functioning erosion control structures is part of the order of conditions. So, um, if we offer the extension and they do not follow through on the replacement of the erosion controls, uh, then we can issue an, an enforcement order. So. You know, we don't necessarily. This one is fairly time sensitive. I think this uh, this order needs to be replaced, uh, or sorry, this order either needs to be extended, or we'll just vote to not extend it by November first. But that means this we either have to make that vote tonight or on the October fourth meeting because the uh, the November meeting is on November fifteenth. Um, so the point is, uh, I don't think that we need to necessarily wait for the installation of the uh, of the erosion control structures uh, before issuing the extension. <laughs> so the extension again is only for this phase one. Yes, that's correct. And then for for the development or the, for the building of this actual building, they'll have to have an yeah, amendment, you know, so no, phase one A or B, and then when they expand to do the rest of the site, those will be uh, subsequent amendments as well. Would they be amendments or would they be whole you know, new NOI? Uh, uh, it could, I mean, maybe it could be either. Um, not quite sure. That, that That's kind of up to the, the applicant. Uh, in in the current order of conditions, it does state though that subsequent plans and development should be done through an amended order. Okay, I, I just you know putting putting extending and extending and extending with amend amendments sometimes is uh, none of us were here. I don't think when when the whole site was first evaluated. So sure, and and that's something that I guess it could be up to the that. discretion of the board, right? So um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioners, questions? Um, Madam Chair, one one thing. I, I see that there is one up. hand raised. Uh, right. I'm not sure if that's for this project. I'm going to go ahead and uh, promote Tracy just to see if she has comments. And also, Mr. Pogany, I don't know if you have anything, any comments to make. Hi, Tracy. Uh, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Alex. Hi, I just wanted, just wanted to add that uh, I reached out to Meadowbrook uh, regarding the silt sock already, and we have a call in, and uh, they said they'd call back soon. So making some progress on that. Thank you. Ms. Duart. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. Just want to introduce myself for the record. I'm Tracy Duart. I'm a civil engineer and I'm the only in development. So we are working um, with the owner on, on the uh, final design of the full development of the site. Um, so I think you guys pretty much covered a lot as far as in the future, whether it's an amendment or a new order. I will say the only issue I've ever had in the past is I have not been able to get a new DEP file number when there's a current DEP file number on a site. So that might be an issue. Um, so I don't know if that's something to discuss, whether possibly going for, you know, a COC to close out once one phase is done and then getting a new order or going for the amendment. But just wanted to point that out that I, I've had that issue before. Okay. 
So, commissioners, any any further questions? Any discussion at all? Has um Beta been out to look at the site? Uh, no. Is is it required or necessary? Uh, I don't think so. Not for for this. Um, this is just what we're doing here. The the, the work has already been permitted. Um, so. All of this has already been approved by a previous version of the Brockton Conservation Commission. So all yep. we're doing here is ensuring compliance with the issued order of conditions and then uh, deciding on whether we want, we want to uh, issue this extension or not. So I didn't think beta was needed to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any future building, of course, would have to be evaluated, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Questions at all? No one else from the from the public? No. Good. I, I feel comfortable since there is that always that avenue of enforcement if there is a, a concern, you know, if things don't seem to be progressing. So that's that's good too. I, um but I entertain a motion then. It's up to you, commissioners, to extend or not extend. Is it possible to continue to the next meeting with um, to see what progress is made on the silt sock? Except that they do need they, this will automatically expire November first, right? If there's oh, okay, uh, yes, but I mean, so the next meeting is October fourth, so we could we could ex, you know um, uh, continue this to the next meeting, but we would have to come to a decision on the October fourth meeting, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kyle, quick question. You're going to, uh, once they've uh, completed the conditions that you're, that you've stated for the, the um, silk salt controls on site and it's removed, you'll follow up that that's on full compliance, correct? Uh, yeah. So uh, at the very end of my agent report, um, I kind of had this little uh, paragraph where I, I kind of uh, allude to the fact that there are other concerns that I have for this site that are kind of outside of the scope of this phase mm -hmm. one extension. Um, so I will be out there, uh, for other reasons, um, in the next few weeks anyway. So I can certainly, uh, confirm, uh, and, and ensure that the, the silt stock that we're acquiring with this extension, uh, is installed, uh, you know, appropriately. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Commissioners? Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable. With that too. Okay, Laura and Sharifa. Same. Yes. Then I would entertain a motion then to grant the extension request for um, one fifteen Oak Hill Way. Is it zero one five Oak Hill Way? That's just the the the, the assessor's map number. The, this doesn't have an address yet, so yeah. Oak Hill Way zero Oak Hill Way. I'll make a motion um, to uh, extend uh, the request for Oak Hill Way um, as long as the conditions that um, Kyle has outlined have been met within a timely manner. A second. Motion's been made and seconded to extend um, the um, order of conditions for um, Oak Hill Way. Parcel uh, 119 or 15. Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. B. Clare, aye. Oh. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Map, aye. Vorus, aye. Kyle, you have your hand up? Uh, yeah. So just first off, um, I kind of broke up on my internet connection there. Oh, we had an affirmative vote, uh, unanimous from the uh, uh, Conservation Commission. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, and then the only other comment was, um, is this a, a three-year extension? Aren't they normally three-year extensions? That's generally what we do, but I just wanted to confirm that it's a three-year extension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, great. Thank you. A very, very quick note, too. If you happen to notice on, I think it was on their agent report, in the first paragraph, you might want to change June 30th, 2023 to 2017. Yes, thank you, Joyce. Yeah. I, I can I can make that change. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. 
Sounds good. It'll be really interesting to see how this, how your green project continues. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Levy, would you mind telling me once again what the name of your company is that collects the stuff? Yeah. Save that stuff. Yeah. We've been in business for 30, 30 years, currently located uh, in Charlestown under the Tobin Bridge. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you to the commission, Kyle. Okay. Thank you. Thanks all. You're welcome. We'll see you again, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to, I see that Isaiah is in uh, the meeting now. I'm going to promote him uh, to host. Uh, my internet's kind of being funky. I don't want to drop out and cause okay. us to crash. So Okay. And Mr. Pogany and Mr. Levy are still. Oh, give me one moment, please. All right, thank you. Um, there is a Mr. Kozerski with a hand up. Uh, that's for the next uh, thing on the agenda oh. item here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So the next agenda item is 115 Goldfinch Drive. Um, Kyle, if you could verify that there's a DEP file number and that a butters have been notified. Uh, yes, uh, this filing was complete. Uh, butters were notified and uh, DEP did issue a file number. Thank you. And I'm promoting Thomas uh, to a panelist. Okay, Mr. Przerski. And uh, Attorney Burke as well. Oh. His hand's not up. I saw it just a moment ago. Uh, uh, Attorney Burke, if you would like to uh, to 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 speak on this, you're welcome. Uh, just raise your hand again, and I'll promote you. Kyle, when you or the Madam Chairman, when we're ready to get started, if you'd like to share the screen with me, I'd be happy to do so. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll do that. What, give me one moment, and I'll pull that up. This is Mr. Skarski speaking, right? Are you from Merrill? Yes, my name is Thomas Pazursky. I'm a professional engineer with Merrill Engineers. I'm one of their di directors. Um, and just let me know when you'd like me to start. Mm -hmm. All right, just so as I get. Uh... Yeah, if you'd like to give us some background, Mr. Pazursky, then oh, I'm not sure, absolutely. but then the maps will be up. Okay. Hey, can everybody see that screen? Mm hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, sure, thanks. All right, my name is Tom Pazerski from Merrill Engineers in Plymouth. Um, we were contacted by the property owner and uh, the applicant uh, to take a look at this property. Apparently, there was a problem that there was a problem that creeped up. Uh, so I went down and took a look at it. I saw that there was um, disturbance on the adjacent property, which is the Wildlands Trust property. What the homeowner didn't realize is how far back that property line went and they weren't familiar that there was a weren't aware there was a wetland down over through here the contractor went over the property line uh, they weren't aware of it as soon as they became aware that there was a problem and we weren't involved with the project that time they stopped immediately and subsequently i was contacted to get involved with the project our firm does a few of these every year we collaborate with a variety of professionals to try to resolve these problems. Um, in this particular instance, uh, we collaborated with ECR Environmental. We have a landscaper on board who's very good at restoring these things, Duxbury Gardeners. And um, we also are working with attorney Jim Burke 
And once we realized uh, we, there was a problem out here, we had the wetland scientists go out and delineate the wetlands. That was Brad Holmes from ECR. The wetland line is here in blue. We subsequently proceeded to complete an existing condition survey, which you can see here. And at that point, we located the limit of disturbance area out here. Now, uh, okay. Mr. Pazurski, would you mind telling me when that line was delineated? Yeah, it was around late 2021, roughly. And I also contacted uh, Wildlands Trust, and I met Owen Gray out here to take a look at the situation as well and how we should address it. It was subsequently determined that we needed to come up with a wet, wetlands restoration plan. Now, in this particular area here, there's pool, there's a there's patio, there's a pit, fire pit, there's a patio, there's a retain a wall that comes over through here. Um, yeah, you can see it better on this plate. Could bring it up just a little bit closer. That would be lovely. Sure. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, I think you guys are in the way of the zone. You are. Uh, we'll be over the other side. All right. There we go. Awesome. So you can see in here, this there's a fire pit that encroached here. There's fill that encroached here. Here's the wetland line. Here's the zone A line. Here are your jurisdictional buffers, the 25 foot no touch, the 50 foot, the 100 foot. And uh, what we did is we located, as you can see, the limit of clearing over here. And then we came up with a program to restore this particular area. Now, our goal is, you can see in the notice of intent, we put this in two phases, and we think it's kind of important that we um, get these projects done at the same time. And the reason for that is, and that will be the same thing with the next filing, which is the Wildlands Trust property. This is my applicant's property. This is the Wildlands Trust property here. So what we would like to do is get out there, put the erosion control measures in, we want to remove the fill that's located in here and here in the 100-year floodplain, regrade this off gradually, then re-prepare the soil area in here. Put a nice soil matrix in here. Um, we have a restoration plan that I will be more than happy to zoom in on. You can see that it is quite extensive. Um, we have um, basically in this area, we're going to have um, about 20 saplings, 45 shrub species, and then that it, that's the buffer zone. And then we have an additional 33 saplings. So this, there's quite a bit of plantings going on here. Um, there's literally hundreds of plantings that are gonna be placed in this particular area. So what I wanna do is I wanna prep this area, grade it off, clean it off, get it restored as best as we can in natural conditions, remove these structures here. Now, one important component of this restoration plan is to, and I'll zoom in on this a little bit. I apologize for jumping back and forth, but some of these plans show what's going on better than the other ones. Um, is I want to take this wall, and it's, I think it's important that we be allowed in this phase one to take this wall and, and rebuild it over here. By the way, Kyle, we're not going to, we, the plans that we provided to you this afternoon, there's not going to be any wall height that's exposed more than three and a half feet. So we don't need a structural wall. We will have a cap on it. And I want, the reason I want to get this stabilized here is because, and do it as part of this phase is move the wall, put it in here, regrade it, and then start a stabilization process. If we are not allowed to do that, then what happens is then we've got to come back in on phase two and do this part and disturb this whole area and then put the, the base of the wall in to have to put it in. I want to work in here, back out and be done. All right. And we'd like to do that this fall. The contractor is ready to go with this particular component of it to stabilize it get it all done, and then we can do that under the supervision of the professional wetland scientists and clearly the Conservation Commission. We've identified a material staging area here to bring the material store. We are, obviously, you can see we even have a larger area that we could use in here if we need to, to get out of the way. The access would be down the end of the driveway to get in here and do the work. 
Um, you can see we've got a limit of work at the erosion control line. And then all the species that have been picked out here are naturally found in this area as we back up and selected for areas where the elevation changes that it works properly in this particular environment. Then the phase two of this project, you can see this is that same wall. We've got this all stabilized. We've got all this all vegetated. We're taking care of this. We will temporarily seed up here. And then what I would like to do is, is then commence with the, the rest of this project here, where we're going to have a fence, which is great because it's going to help delineate that area and then back out as we, we take, take this area out here. We changed um, some of what they wanted to do on their pool plan here, and we've dropped this whole area down. So we're minimizing the fill in this particular area. We've flattened this area out here, lowered these walls down because they wanted the original plan that Kyle saw had, I think, seven foot walls. We're not going to do that. We're going to terrace things down, minimize the earth's work on the buffer zone. There'll be less time in there to get in there. Then we can come up in the pool area where it's nice and stable and flat presently, work out and get out and be done. And then when everything's said and done, we will have uh, a nice fenced area in here. And uh, that's basically, I think, an overview of what's going on here. So Mr. Przerski, I just wanna make sure that I understand. What you're suggesting is that you would almost simultaneously remove the old retaining wall, grade that out and put in a newer retaining wall closer to the home? That yeah, correct? that's a that's a critical component here because I think of the amount of fill and everything that's down here. So what I want to do is um, we want to take the wall, this wall out here, and I want to relocate this wall here to stabilize this area here, temporarily seat up here, and then we can get in here and do the yeoman's work of getting the natural area restored here. And then this gives us a nice slope to back out, and then we would just then, then the next phase of this project would then be continue to work here and then back out. So you're proposing to use the same material from the old wall that was out, outside of the boundary. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll, they'll supplement it with new materials as needed. I mean, that was, I did go out with Kyle to the site and that was a really tall wall. How, how deep will it be in order to maintain, uh, you know, to keep it so that way there isn't any um, breakthrough or anything? How... How deep will that wall have to be? Uh, I don't think it'll have to be very deep at all because because remember what I said here is we, we we're proposing that we're going to, and this is something I want to review on site with the contractors and everything. We're proposing to drop this particular area down. I, I think they were they built that wall up so high in anticipation of putting several feet of fill in here. And when they realized the problem, they stopped. Well, that's not going to be the program now. What we're going to do is have a much more shallow wall. This whole, as you can see these steps here, this whole area is going to tear us down to a much lower area that needs less fill. And then as we come up here, it'll be three and a half feet. And actually what happens is you can see how the fill walks up here. There's um, a box there that's preventing me from seeing me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you see where it's walking up here? The wall is actually going to come above the grade and the pool area is going to drop down. So then we, what that does is that's present a nice amenity. So the runoff, it intercepts some of the runoff and then it, it, it allows it to, to shed over the patio area here instead of sheet flowing everything here and then flies down the hill. So, um, yeah, that's basically what we're, what we're showing. And this is a blow up of that area with the elevations. Oh, yeah. And as you, as you can see, um, we, we've taken that wall down and we're, we're going we're gonna to take that down and this is stuff, like I said, we want to review in the field because I know some of these areas when you get down here. I mean, this is, I think, this is probably the area you looked at here where the elevation is somewhere around 159 and the top wall is 165. So it's probably six feet up in the air. Yeah. yeah that, that situation is going to go away. We're, so in this not... case, the top of the the lawn area or is, is 165 with a, what's that grade going? So it's 160. Yeah, 165.5, we've got a 167, we've got a tie-in because that's what the existing natural grade is in here. Then we slope it down gradually, as you can see, and as we come down the bottom of the hill, we feather it down and flatter. Uh-huh. And what about over towards where it says stone retaining wall, the 160 mark? You see the 160? Um... Yep, right here. Yeah. Yep. yeah. 
we're gonna we're gonna this is all fill here we're taking this out regrading and this is all gonna become nice and flatter in here this is all gonna be nice and flat when everything's said and done yeah oh, is that but, 160 gonna be a like a, a is that going to be a little rushed into the wetlands area or is that going to be a five foot drop there no okay no no you can see what that's why you can see what we're, we're, we're uh we're taking this this fill and we're bringing as best as we can figure out where the natural grade used to be mm -hmm. and trying to keep that watershed going here going here and going here so we're trying to fan things out and then the other thing the important component is we level this bottom area off nice and flat so it helps dissipate things down here mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was just raising my hand just to make a point here. Um, the 160 that you were mentioning uh, there a moment ago, Madam Chair, is uh, that's part of the existing conditions uh, versus the, the that's the light gray that's kind of yes. back. And yeah, the, the, uh, these are the, the, these the, are the dark new blacks grays, yeah. are the the the, the proposed uh, elevations. Okay. okay. One yeah. This okay. this 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 okay. is steep, and we're taking that steepness out. I see. I see. Thank you. Good point, Kyle. Thank you. Kyle, do you have anything else to um, to add or? Yeah, um, so so these plans that we're looking at now um, are, are new plans that weren't part of the original NOI's uh, submission. So I just received these plans this afternoon at four o'clock. So I haven't had a, a, a lot of time to review these and this is not what I wrote my agent report about. So uh, in my agent report, um, I'll just kind of summarize that. And obviously things have changed now because we've received new plans. Um, but in my agent report, I kind of uh, mentioned that uh, there is this kind of uh, uh, drive to uh, try to get this restoration plan started this year. So we have some we have some growing days left, but we're kind of getting to the end of that growing season. Um, mm -hmm. So with the uh, intention of trying to get this through this process a little bit faster, I kind of recommended that uh, we kind of just split uh, at least the 115 uh, Goldfinch uh, project into two, two, two like distinct phases. Uh, and not just like a sequence of, of construction. Um, and uh, my, proposal, my, my proposition was to do phase one, which is just the restoration, and then come back later with the phase two. Uh, that way we can have a little bit more time to look at the actual uh, uh, you know, uh, wall. And, and, and Thomas did address one of the concerns with the wall that I brought up, but uh, that was kind of my initial kind of uh, thought on this was to kind of split this up into restoration plan in phase one and then uh, construction in phase two. Um, Again, I, I haven't really been able to look at this specific plan very deeply since we just got that today. Mm -hmm. um, but Thomas, I guess you and I can maybe have a quick discussion here. Uh, the yep. other thing that I was concerned about, and you've kind of already addressed this, aside from the height of the wall, was when that wall would be constructed. Because I agree with you that um, we want to get that wall probably constructed at or you know before we uh, do the restoration planting because we don't want right. to have to go in there later after the fact and do more disturbance and then also have to worry about protecting that area that we just restored. So um, I didn't really bring this up in the agent report because I kind of thought that would be addressed by splitting the project into two phases, uh, but that was one thing that I wanted to mention. Um, a couple other concerns that I have, generally speaking, are, are just a, a comment. Uh, I know you said you've you've lowered the elevations of the, of the new proposed wall, and I did see that on the plan today. Um, I just want to note for your reference, and so you're aware, uh, it's not four feet above grade. It's four foot for the entire structure of the wall, including the footing, if there's any footing uh, buried below the, the grade. So anything that the entire structure of the wall, you, if it's two feet below grade, uh, sorry, below the, below the ground, and there's just two feet above, that's still considered a four foot wall uh, as far as the building department is concerned. So just make, make sure you're aware of that. Um, okay. You know, um, and, and we'll this take a is really look at just, that as well. The Thank concern you. is uh, having unbalanced fill on a retaining wall, uh, especially here in someone's backyard. Uh, we want it to make we make sure we want to make sure that it's structurally sound, um, so we don't have any any issues with that down the road. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a question though on that on that new uh, document that you have. Uh, I think down at the bottom of this plan, you have kind of a, a the the the. the side cut through view of the of the wall and there's yeah, that's that's the wall that the landscape des designer wanted to put in yeah so can you can you describe to me how the drainage pipe 
functions and what what's all hooked into that drainage pipe on that plan there? Okay, typically we could detail detail that out more. If I was to design this wall here, what we would have is this drainage pipe actually would be um, set up here, and you'd have to out put out outlet at every ten feet. This would be granular fill. This would be filter fabric here. This would be loam. The filter fabric helps protect the stone. So when the runoff comes to the wall, down to the wall, it um, can get in the sub drain and then come out and then typically you'd have outlets every 10 10 feet on center or 20 feet on center for relief of the hydraulic pressure okay all right well thank okay. you i just wasn't sure even how that that was supposed to function uh, under ideal circumstances yeah so. and just just so you know madam chit kyle was great he gave us these comments late last week and then we jumped right on him so that's why there's just such a quick turnaround on getting this mm -hmm. and you know some of the highlights of what you're seeing before you is in response to his comments, um, which do include identifying the limit of work boundary, uh, changing for silt sock detail. We had straw wattle. Uh, we added a note that no grades will exceed three to one, which is note number seven here. And then we added a material staging area. And the other thing we just finished talking about is addressing the wall, the wall height, and the need to have that in the phase. And we have also for the record, as he asked for, is a phase one restoration plan. And we have a phase two pool plan. So we meld both projects in one right after the other so you can see clearly what's going on. We're pretty transparent and we, uh, Karen's aware of what we'd work in here and we work with Karen in the past. So. Oh, this this is a patio that looks like patio that's not pool is it that, no it's patio that's the little patio area blow up okay and the pool would be the pool if you that? In a second. Okay. Uh, i keep thinking i'm an autocad i gotta go below to grab this there's the pool so this is here and then we step up to the gray because the gray comes up quite a bit i mean we're down at one 58, 159, 160, and up top here it's 173. So clearly the, you, you can see this is all natural woodland. So this 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 was a natural hill in here that went down and drained into the wetlands. And if you look at how the existing topography goes here, these gray dash lines, you can see how it wraps around here. We're trying to model that. And you can see the natural spacing of the topography. We, we That's something we pay particular attention to, to in our design. That we try to do the same here so we're not accelerating water. And then leave a level spot down here because as you get down low, as you all know, down in the wetlands, a lot of times it gets flatter. That is, in fact, the case here. So we maintain that level area down here. So we're hopefully feeding the wetland the same way it's being fed now. Um, and we held the same pattern. And then where that stone wall um, runs behind that patio, and then what did you say was up? There's a limit of works. It looks like the limit of work line. Correct. There would be no, no, just a fence there. Is that correct? That'd be a silt sock, a stake to place silt sock. So it lets the contractor know this is where you can go. You can't go any further mm -hmm. into the woods from here. It's essentially set right at the edge of the woods um, when they do the work. Um, we exaggerated it off here a little bit, but it's going to be set right at the edge of the wood line. You can't go any further. And then this will allow them to get in here, take this wall out, remove any of these, uh, the, the sub base or anything else they put in there. Commissioners, any questions at all? I have a question about the fill. Mm -hmm. What is the fill? Or where is it coming from? Well, the fill that they put in there was 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 clean fill. Uh, it looked like a it looked like a gravel burrow that they put in to me. Um, so that that's the they need to be using clean burrow fill when they they do the rest of the stuff. But you have to keep in mind here this here. This is all cut and removal. So when they do this here, they can take this out. They can use it for minor grading in here and stabilization in here. And then up here, we're already up here. The, the, the existing grade is pretty much, we're holding for the pool. 
We're holding the pretty much the existing grade here. It's 173. The pool patio is 172.8. And we did the same here. The existing grade down below is 165. So we're absolutely minimizing as much fill that needs to be imported for this project here. In fact, when they excavate the pool, I wouldn't be surprised if there's material that needs to be taken away. Okay. Um, I have a question about the plantings. Will mm -hmm. they be able to be planted this year or do we have to wait till the spring? No, these species can be planted this year. I went over this with a wetland scientist and also the uh, landscaper, Duxbury Gardeners, and they are ready to go. In fact, they've already got the, the uh, nursery stock ready to, to bring onto the site. So they can plant it this year. So that's why I think it's kind of important. We're still in a couple months of growing season. I did, they did note to me that last year with the, wet, the weather we had, that they were doing some plantings all the way up to December. Um, Put them in place here but uh, right now we're uh, mid-september and uh, getting towards the end so i think it's kind of i think this is a prime opportunity if the commission approves this that we can try to get in here as soon as possible and get this work done and that'll maximize the root take uptake for the plants and everything else in there it's going to be a nice comprehensive uh, restoration plan in here and um, one last question um, I can't tell from this drawing where the property line is for, um, for the owners. I, it's a small rectangle, isn't it? What's that? The property line? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a drill hole back here and it comes straight back here. Um, mm -hmm. We also provided the client a proposal today, which they approved which was to stake out the property line. And as Kyle recommended to have, to reestablish the wetland flagging out here. So it's nice and fresh before they start. That's and right. we also will stake out the erosion control line. Thank you. Yep. Tarifa, Ruby, Peggy. Oh, anyone else? Ruby, are you? Yeah, you are. Any other questions at all? Kyle, I see your hand up, sir. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I guess um, my recommendation then to the commission is that uh, I, I I would like to have a little bit more time to review this plan because this came in at four o'clock today and you know I, I, I had just very done the, the very briefest uh, kind of overview. Um, I, I do uh, like a lot of the changes that, that we've talked about tonight. I just am not comfortable uh, you know issuing an order of conditions with this uh, plan, uh, not having a chance to actually sit down and, and review it closely. Um, one thing that I would uh, would appreciate, and I think should be included with with this, if we're going to try to stick to, to, to the one plan uh, here, um, I think a, a sequence and schedule of, of, of the restoration and the construction would be helpful um, to include with this, um, uh, just so we have that kind of uh, in place, and we're kind of approving that along with this plan here. I think that might be a, a thing that we should include. It sounds fine to me. I, I was going to be saying the same thing that we really, I mean, our next meeting is October 4th, right? Yeah, it's two weeks from today. So it's not a, not a huge time. Okay. Is there anyone from the public that feels as though they would might want to speak to this? Kyle, would you mind? Um, Minimizing the screen or uh, well, yeah, I can I'm, stop I'm, sharing. Oh, I don't okay. see anyone with their hand up though. No. Um, I guess one last comment though. I think the restoration plan looks good. It's just how we are how we implement that with the construction. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I, initially I had suggested we split this into two separate phases just so we could get yeah. the restoration like approved tonight. But um, if we're just doing it on one plan, I'd, I'd like to, a little bit more time to make sure that that that, that sequence of construction is is kind of fine. And then uh, I just want to confirm with the building department about that wall. But I think yeah, again, let me let me know on that. We, fine, we, so. We've got we just so you know, yeah. Please let me know on that particular issue, and then we've got the flexibility to work with you on that issue, um, meaning that we can we can relocate the wall a little bit and do some grading and stuff like that to comply with the height and 
you know, I want I want to try to minimize the fill that's being put down in that area there. And I think sure. and I think that's, that's really close. beneficial from an environmental standpoint as well. So. Yeah, yeah. And if there's wildlife that has to use that area, they can they can certainly have ease of going around the area the way we've got the site graded off. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any questions at all? Comments? I noticed that Mr. I Burke. Just have... Oh, go ahead. Are we just voting on like pass in phase one, the reservation? Uh, I'm a little I confused. I think at this point we'd probably just be continuing till October 4th. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. So that way we'd have time to eventually um yeah, digest this. To... Sounds like the correct. Phase these two things is changing as a result of these new plans. So uh, the idea of phase one for just restoration, I think that's been changed, that, that's changed as a result of these new plans. So I think that's something that needs for us to all take a you know look at and then for Kyle to be able to get back to Mr. Brzezerski. Yeah, us. between Kyle and I, we'll figure it out. Like I said, there was a, we got the letter late last week and then we we jumped right on this as quick as we could and 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 i i, I do appreciate how fast you were able to turn that around i i have a lot on this agenda this month so there was it was it was kind of kind of a lot to to, to get yeah. out as far as the report so yeah i appreciate how, how your turnaround there but yeah i think it just, we just needed uh some time to kind of okay. review the, the new plan and, and and but we can be in communication over the next week and uh okay. kind of, you know hash things out okay sounds good and i will talk to my folks about the sequencing of everything so I'll entertain a motion then to continue to the next meeting. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Chairperson. Don't we need to have public? I don't know if we. I don't know if you said it. I did. There were no hands up. But oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, though. And Mr. Burke, no, no comments. No, I think that Tom did a fabulous job, uh, and I'm not sure there's anything I could say that uh, would add to it. Uh, I know that the owners realized they had a mistake, but they jumped right on it. They worked with Wildlands that. Uh, and Wildlands has been very supportive of this project. I I I know Linda and I've talked with her, so uh, I it's going to benefit everybody when this gets going. And we hope we can use the uh, weather to our advantage. Thank you. Okay. And one final comment: uh, we were told by Wildlands Trust that uh, this this is the first time that somebody who has created a problem on their property has come forward and said, uh, "Hey, I stopped. I'm sorry. I did something wrong. How do I fix it?" And so, Absolutely. And, and they realize that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I entertain a motion then to continue to the next meeting for actually continue 115.5 to the next meeting. I make a motion to continue 115 Goldfinch Drive to our October 4th meeting. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. Roll, roll call vote, please. Speaker aye. Clay, I. Curtis, I. Matt, I. Horace, I. Motion carries. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, will you also be speaking to the next? Yes. <laughs> I'll let you go too quickly then. <laughs> if I could just start, I think you could save everybody a whole bunch of time. Uh, okay. I would. Is that okay? Yeah. This, sure. this project is tied. Well, Identic. Identic. I'm sorry. Uh, so we, we do have a lot of bookkeeping that we need to do uh, to open the hearing uh, ahead of ahead of oh, uh, that's right. the that's there. Right. So that's right because it is a separate NOI. It, it, the, the, yeah, these are technically two separate filings, but that's they but but as implied before, these will be uh, kind of uh, implemented at the same time, almost by necessity because the property line issue. So, uh, but this is a separate filing, so we just need to do some administrative things real quick. So first of all, just need to verify that there's been a DEP file number available and that a butters have been notified. So yes, a uh, DEP file number has been issued for this project and then the abutters have been notified. Okay, thank you. And now Mr. Preserves. And then also the legal notices have been posted. Okay. Uh, I will give you the same exact spiel we just went through. The, the projects have to be done together and uh, that's basically it. Uh, I think that it's up to the commission to uh, probably follow suit what they just did with the continuance. I mean, we, we we certainly can continue this as well if you want them to be issued on the on the same date. But um, the, the this this project is is really just the restoration plan. It, 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 it does involve some removal of. I guess I guess at this point, yeah, you want because there is that removal of the of the patio. We probably ought to 
um, do them at the same date. So yeah, I guess I was going to suggest that we might be able to, to okay this restoration plan because this is really just the restoration work, but it might just be easier and simpler in the long run uh, to kind of issue them at the same time. Mr. Pazerski, did you change any of the grading or anything like that um, to, uh, at all in this part? No, I mean, this is pretty much the same. All I did was tuck the wall up tight uh, and drop it down, which is on the other client's property. So they could, I mean, that might be a good compromise is that they, they can, we can get this one approved. And then on October 4th, we can do the pool thing. And what that'll allow th things to stop moving along with the contractor. We obviously clearly would get the construction sequence and everything from the wetland scientists and the contractor on, on both of these, they'll be tied together. But I think this might be a good opportunity to start things a couple of weeks earlier than the other one. Uh, the, the only the only thing with that though is that this plan does uh yeah just require the removal of some of those things so um yeah. if if that's something that we think we can we can deal with because you know it's we don't want to necessarily remove that retaining wall that's existing now partially uh you know what i mean so yeah i want i want to i want to link, the, the, the link that's these gonna be together started in the next two weeks yeah, I want to link these things together. So when they, that's the other thing too, you have to consider this thing's going to be done in, in it has to be done in rather large phases, such as removal of the fill, regrading, prepping the soil, then do then moving the wall, getting the wall, and then and then you put the move behind the wall, and then you're going to do your plantings. So those are the basic phases. Yeah, I, I think I think as we've kind of talked through this, I think just continuing this uh, and issuing them both at the same time is probably the, the best course of action. Commissioners, mm -hmm. any questions, comments? Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this particular applicant? No? Okay. okay. And I also entertain a motion then to continue uh, well, West Elm Street extension uh, to the next meeting in October on October fourth. Okay. Made and seconded. Uh, who made it? Who made the uh, motion? Clay. Oh, thank you, thank you, Ruby. Motion's been made. Second. Second, Second and third. Um, okay, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Um, roll call vote, please. Finkler, aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Knapp, aye. Morris, aye. Okay, we will see you next month then, Mr. Okay, Chair. thank you, folks. Okay. Have a great night. Bye bye. Okay. Next month. And that'll, that'll give us a chance to take a look at that, too, I'm sure. Um, let's see, that one's done, that one's done. Uh, the next one is 511 Thatcher Street, is that correct? That's what we're up to, number seven. Yes, Violet that's correct. Thatcher Street, a notice of intent for solar canopy construction, Farland Corporation. Is there a DEP file number? And uh, have a butter been notified? Uh, so initially, DEP declined to issue a file number until some uh, filing uh, administrative things were addressed. Uh, they just issued the file number yesterday. So in my agent report, it says that there wasn't an, a file number issued, but there has been one since then. Um, and then, yes, butters have been notified, and uh, this has been posted. Uh, the legal notices have been posted. Thank you. And do we have anyone from the Farland Corporation? or a solar canopy here present. Christian Barlin. All right, I believe that's it. We have the, the, the property owners here as well. Is that Donald Gallant? Yes. Good, evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. For the record, Christian Fallon, Principal Engineer and President of Fallon Corp. Here tonight, representing Parallel Products. If I may share my screen.
So this is the site here. It's located at 511 Thatcher Street. Um, the site is the is formerly um, a junkyard site, as you can see, with all the vehicles stored on site here. Um, the total site is 7.82 acres of land. And uh, I'm going to share the site plan. I don't know if you can all see that, but but basically the site has um, bordering vegetated wetlands on the south, which is the green the green line here, the north, and then to the east area here. The blue line is the hundred foot buffer line, and the magenta line is the twenty five foot no touch zone. Basically, what we're proposing here is solar canopies. Um, three solar canopies over the existing cars. Um, as far as stormwater goes, the, the stormwater isn't affected because the, the water just sheet flows through the existing, um, through the panels. So it doesn't, it's not, doesn't act like a roof, but every, every panel has an inch gap in between. So the water just hits the, the panels and then, and then drops down below and then sheet flows as, as it currently exists out there. So there's no impacts in regards to stormwater runoff. Um, we did provide stormwater runoff calculations and the stormwater checklist to the DEP. The site is within a flood zone. Um, it's flood zone A. So the impacts to the, to the floodplain were very minimal. Um, there was a total of 727 cubic feet which is basically just the columns that take up flood storage space for the canopies. So in order to compensate for that, we did provide a, a, a flood storage compensation of 756 um, cubic feet of storage, which is in the southerly portion of the site. Um, that was the only revision to the set of plans um, that we did send over to Kyle. Um, and with, that was requested as well from DEP. So as far as as far as really the impacts, these we've been doing these canopy projects all over the state. Um, really been targeting uh, junkyard sites because there's a there's a good tax credit for having these canopies and junkyard sites, um, and it gives a chance to to clean up these sites as we go through it. Each canopy gets installed. Um, we do one canopy at a time where the the cars are all moved from that one section whether we're starting on the south or the north. Cars are all removed. Most most of them are removed usually off site. We put the canopy in and then they and then they move the cars back in place. Um, the canopies themselves are all designed to allow um, the operation to to operate just as it did when the canopy wasn't there. There's clear enough height clearance for for loaders to be able to move these vehicles in and out. Um, underneath the canopies as well. I do have, we did provide the canopy plans as well. Let's see here. So Mr. Farland, those, um, those dark solid lines are the size of the entire canopy and each one of those dots is a column that will yeah. support the canopy, is correct. that correct? Correct. Be huge. Yeah, so as you can see, 80% of this project is actually outside the the 100 foot buffer zone um which is the which is the blue lines is the 100 foot buffer zone so all these canopies are really outside of that outside that area um again this is all area that's previously disturbed um so it's really the work is going to be those columns um if we see here What will the columns be going through? What's the what's the matrix underneath? So as far as the columns, um, I'll show you a detail. Oh. So these are the columns. The depths are going to vary. Um, 
right now we're at you know 50 percent construction drawings but the depth of the columns they are 30 inch diameter and they go down as far as um 10 10 feet typically um so these are these are directionally drilled into the ground cord cord with drills um is a steel casing it gets poured with concrete uh, material gets removed and um, that's what's left. It's basically like a light bulb base at the end of the day, which is which sticks out two feet from the from the surface. And then the column is placed on that. Yeah, the steel column is is placed. Oops. Move it over. And is there a panel at the top of each column? Yeah, the panel, this is the columns here. So you would have the columns align out. And then the panels, panels are all up top. This is all just a basically a steel structure. Canopy. How many, how many um solar panels would fit that area? Um let me go back to this for you. Wow. So you can see each one of these panels, they have the rectangle shapes here. Yeah. And, and you're these, saying there's no water sheeting, huh? From that or snow melt sheeting or no, the canopies are they're they're at five degrees. Um so the snow melts in between in between each panel is there's an inch gap. Uh, that was shown over here. Um, One inch. Yeah. So the water sheet flows. It drop it drips down, and then it would sheet flow as it typically would, as as it would if the canopy wasn't there. And what did you say was on the matrix at the bottom that you'll be drilling through? Is that concrete? Is it gravel? What's underneath? What that the cars are parked on? Well, the existing grade remains. We don't change the grade. No, I just wondered what the material was. It's okay. so it's, it's gravel. We 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 bore out the gravel with the directional drilling, and that gravel gets replaced with concrete. So each one of those will be impervious. Yeah. So that's basically the stormwater calx as far as impervious. It's that thirty inch diameter. Um, that's really the only increase in impervious area. Which we, which we provide the stormwater calcs, it's it's negligible. That doesn't impact. Um, so you can see the spacing in between each column is typically 30, 30 feet. So it's 30 diameter, 30 inch diameter, 30 feet between. And we did provide um, previous project we had presented. You guys had a concern with dewatering. Um, so we did provide the dewatering details as well in case we do run into any kind of water that does need to be pumped out. And where's the limit of work boundary? So the limited work boundary, we have the siltation fence around the around the, the project. Um, there's so many dots, it's hard to follow. <laughs> we stay away from the uh there's no work within the 25 foot buffer. Um and most of the if you look at the aerial again, you'll see. I have a couple see, of questions. See what we're dealing with here at the sites, mainly, you know, wide open with the wetlands being north side, south side, and then in this portion over here. How did they ever get that thing there in the middle of all that wetlands? 
the first place. Um, what happens when a panel needs repair and are the panels made of any hazardous materials? So typically, um, as far as the, the panels themselves, they're monitored 24 seven. Um, if there are every, any issues, they typically go out there um, and re will replace any panel that needs to be replaced. But typically they, they go out there, you know, every every six months just to inspect the panels. Um, but it's all non-hazardous material. So pan panels would be replaced as needed. Will the um, panels block any light to the plants in the protected areas? No, the panels are all outside any of the, it's all open area um, that we're currently proposing over the, the existing vehicles. Um, we, we kept them all outside the 25 foot no touch. So there's no, there's no really vegetation underneath, underneath the vehicle, underneath the panels right now. And when you remove the cars, mm -hmm. are there any hazardous materials that will be released in the process of moving? And where are you moving the cars to? Yeah, I mean the site, the junkyard site's under under DEP jurisdiction, so any, anything, um, they're under their own regulations in regards to a junkyard. Um, so there'll be no the junk the cars that are there are already all stripped of all hazardous gasoline oil material already um so these are all vehicles that are mainly considered clean and uh last question what happens to the gravel that's removed where is it going so the gravel that we remove it will be removed off site um this is in a flood zone so we can't you know put the material back on the ground. Otherwise we would have to compensate even more than what we're already doing for the columns. So that, that soil will be removed off site. Thank you. No problem. Mr. Holden. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to address one of the questions you kind of uh, asked a moment ago, uh, Madam Chair. Um, you asked how could a site like this be built uh, since it's in like uh, the floodplain and uh, around all of those wetlands. So uh, just a, a little bit of context for everyone. Uh, the Wetlands Protection Act was passed in the 70s um, and any site that was like existing, uh, existing land use before then uh, doesn't fall under uh, uh, that law. So like they don't have to like, they were kind of grandfathered in, I guess, basically. So uh, because it was um, an existing like land use, I think the site was I, in my agent report, I looked at some old aerials, aerial photography, and I think it was, uh, the, I think the building and the land use uh, as, as kind of to store automobiles was uh, done sometime between 1971 and 1974. So um, that's, that's why this is allowed to be here it's just because it's kind of always been in this area since the beginning uh, of the Wetlands Protection Act. So just to answer that question. And was it that large? Uh, no, uh, if you look at historical aerial photos, um, the amount of uh, automobile storage there has has drastically increased since the 70s. If I had to guess on, on just from memory from a week ago when I was looking at this, there may have been 20 to 30 cars out there initially in the, in the first aerial photo that I saw. Um, and now, you know, there are hundreds. So it, it's it's very, it's, it's drastically increased the, the amount of uh, car storage on, on site. So once, once the Wetland Protection Act went through, they didn't have to refile because... Well, you know, and that's one of those iffy things because, you know, at, at what point do you hit a threshold that, that says, okay, this is where we've crossed the line. And it's kind of one of these, you know, the boiling pot, the boiling frog in the, in, in the, the pot yeah. of boiling water, right? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how this works. Like, not that the the Wetlands Protection Act doesn't have jurisdiction here; it does. But at what point um, uh, is 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 the threshold met? Like, wh why would there be action taken this year rather than the last thirty years? And to, you have to really answer that question satisfactorily uh, to be able to to pursue a case in in, in something like this. But now, there's an alteration to that site that then opens up evaluation of the site, no? 
Well, yes, uh, it, it does open the site up for evaluation. And, you know, uh, once hypothetically, if this were to be approved, uh, it would also allow the commission to uh, to to insert insert different stipulations in the order of conditions to improve the site uh, and make it a better site environmentally than it, than it currently is. Um, Kyle, has this been this hasn't been peer reviewed with beta, has it? Uh, no, it hasn't. That's basically my recommendation in my agent report. Um, because of this, uh, the site is extremely environmentally degraded, um, and it's in an environment, environmentally sensitive area. Basically, the entire site is is mostly it, it's mostly within floodplain, probably ninety percent of it, and then all those different wetland resource areas. Um, I am not comfortable making this determination. I, I would like uh, the commission to request beta to to review this. <laughs> Is commissioners any other questions or anything? Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this particular applicant? See anything? I do not see any hands raised, Madam Chair. No. Then I entertain a motion that it be that this particular case be presented to beta for evaluation and then continued to a for a, to a date in the future. I'm not sure that they'd be able to get it done in two weeks, but yeah. So, uh, just Christian, so so you're aware the, the the process here is I will ask uh, Beta to review this for the commission. They will uh -huh. put together they'll they'll review the files that you've sent to me, uh, and they'll put together a scope and fee uh, that needs to be funded by the applicant. Uh, once that is funded, the scope and fee is funded, then Beta will uh, start their peer review. Uh, and then that's kind of how we'll we'll move through this process. Oftentimes there's uh, kind of a, an exchange between the applicant and beta as we address certain concerns. Um, and that, you know, that can take, you know, months as, as things go back and forth. Uh, but then at the end of that process, uh, if all of beta's concerns are met, uh, then the, the commission can then uh, uh, issue an order of conditions for the site. Sounds good. Okay. Would someone make a motion then to um, have it beta evaluate, and then we will continue to uh, probably the November meeting? Does that sound appropriate? Because October is just in two weeks. Um, I'm not. Can can you skip months with a continuation? I'm I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, I think once we open a hearing, does it not have to stay on the agenda until we close the hearing? Oh, okay. So we'll continue to next month and then just continue again should beta not Yeah, happen. I believe so. Okay. Okay. So I entertain a motion, please. And the motion is for a request for beta to review this um, proposal and property. So I make the motion for beta to review the property at um, 511 Thatcher Street and the solar canopy construction and continue this um, notice of intent until the November meeting. October. October, excuse me. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to have this reviewed by beta and then um, continue to the October meeting. Roll call vote, please. All in favor? Speaker aye. Clay aye. Curtis aye. Knapp aye. Boris aye. Okay, Mr. Farland, I think we will see you next month or? Absolutely. Thank you. Can we take a five minute break? It's fine with me. Uh, rest of the commissioners, okay? The time's fine. Oh, Kyle, okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. Seventh inning spread.
I know. They 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 actually offer it to the junkyard because the junkyard charges rent. It's a solar company. So the solar company is is Harold Rogers called is willing to <laughs> Kyle, what were the other um, um, filings that were um, not on the agenda for tonight? I got yeah. So it was number eight. The Aim Street, uh, eighty two Aim Street RDA, uh, did not have uh, legal notices posted. So and that was because the applicant didn't fund them, not because we didn't try to post the legal notices. So uh, they uh, are not uh, on the agenda. Well, they're on the agenda, but they're not like going to be discussed tonight. Right. And then it was uh, number 13, 14, 15, and sixteen. Uh, all new file. Well, these are all filings that we had last last month. Mm -hmm. um, that beta is in the process of 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 having their comments addressed with the applicant or uh, with the uh, 
that's how three of them are. And then the third, the fourth one, uh, 166 East Ashland Street uh, has not funded the peer review yet. So they're, they're just kind of on hold on that too for now. Okay, thank you. Yep. So we made it up to present filings, huh? We did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we finished with Mr. Farland? Um, yes, he uh, is on a, a thing later on though tonight. So um, Christian, if you're able oh. to remove yourself, I, I can remove you, but I think it might remove you from the entire call. So I don't want to uh, permanently remove you. Yeah, from how room. do I, um, I've never had to remove myself. <laughs> Would you want to go forward to the uh, number 11? No, well, that's up to you, right. Madam Chair. I have no problem with that. We could go forward to number 11. And um, is that the one you'd be speaking to, Mr. Farland? Uh, the 900 West Chestnut? Yes. We could, if anyone, if no one has a problem with that, we can just go forward to that one and then come back to, um, to item number nine. Sure. Okay. So let's see. Number 11 is 900 West Chestnut Street. Um, at the nap center. That was, that's a Lynch's towing facility, correct? That is correct, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so just uh, are we ready to to move forward, Madam Chair? I, certainly, please. Okay. Um, so this is something that's been before the commission. I think uh, two months ago uh, was when it was first uh, brought before the commission. We looked at some plans. Um, Elise uh, had some comments uh, for uh, Varland Corp to address. Um, we uh, communicated those comments. Um, and I think they were, this was continued from uh, last month because we just didn't have quite enough time to get, to get the plans turned around um, mm -hmm. and, and address the comments uh, that, that were made. Um, Christian, uh, do you want to take this away? I, I think, oh. I guess, I guess, I, the as far as I'm concerned, uh, they've they've addressed all the comments that that we've we've uh, uh, kind of had for this this project. So, um, Christian, I, I guess I'll let you take it away. Yes, again, Madam Chair, for the record, Christian Fallon, Principal Engineer and President of Fallon Corp. Uh, we did present this project um, um, as as Kyle had said a month or two ago. We we made the revisions that the commission had requested. Again, this was an existing filing that was previously approved. We are putting solar canopies over the existing pavement. So there's no additional work outside the limit of work that was already approved. Originally, <clears throat> the commission had some concerns with the areas that we did propose outside of the pavement area, um, specifically in the in the in the panel um, to the north which was this panel here was overhanging the, the pavement area. So we did bring that in. So there wouldn't be any shading in that, in that uh, vegetation area. Um, so we made those changes. We did add the details of dewatering if needed. Um, so we feel like we addressed all the comments. I think, I think Kyle's um, consultant um, agent report did, did state that. So we are hoping the, Commission agrees and can approve this amendment tonight. Um, so I, I guess the one caveat is um, there have been multiple submissions over the last two months uh, that that address specific uh, concerns, um, and but we don't have a final packet that has uh, all of the things kind of included. So uh, in my agent report, I, I, I do recommend that we issue. Uh, uh, this amended order of conditions, um, but uh, that's a subject that we get presented uh, final plans that, that are inclusive of all the changes. Uh, because right now, I think the most recent plan that you submitted for this meeting was was just uh, just a map like this. Um, so we need uh, the other things. And I guess, Christian, I can work with you uh, yeah. to, to really lay that out. And I think I, I think I have that outlined, like the specific documents that I want um, in the agent report. Is it yep. too much to ask that we have that we get that at the next meeting, and then and then issue the amended order at that time? No, I think I think that would be reasonable. Uh, that would give us a couple of weeks to kind of put those documents together, um, and then we can confirm that we have all those. Uh, but but again, I think I, all all the comments have been addressed. We just don't have it all in one approvable packet. I guess is is yeah, where if, we the, are if the commission if the commission is fine with that, I just have to authorize the 
the solar company because these are our site plans which have been amended um per the per the comments we just need to get have the solar company now finalize their plans which is re re revising their plans i just didn't want to do that until the commission is fine with everything but yeah that's no problem we can do that and then all right hopefully. uh christian if you don't mind maybe we can have a email we can continue an email chain tomorrow just so uh you're clear on, on what i would like and that way uh you know you only have to go to them once and ask for uh you know new plans and stuff from them does that sound okay all right yes. great i'll uh, i'll send you an email about this tomorrow thank you Thank you. Okay, so I entertain a motion then that this will be continued till the October meeting. I make a motion to um, continue 900 West Chestnut Street till the October 4th meeting. Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Speaker I. Sorry, Clay, I. Curtis, I. Nap, I. Boris, I. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye, bye, Mr. Perlin. Bye. Okay, good. Now we can go back to number nine, right? 455 Oak Street? Yes. Where we are? Um, okay, that's the Fuller Craft. Uh, yeah, and we have a few people here uh, to speak to this. So I'm going to promote them now. Tim Power. Hello, Mr. Power. Hi, Mr. Hi. Brooks. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Good evening. An update. We haven't seen you in a while. That's true. You'd like you want to me to go? Sure. We ready to. Either. Whoever is presenting, please do. Go ahead, Tim. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so. Uh oh. Yeah, site design presenting uh, Fuller Craft. Been here after some uh, some just miscommunications and getting uh, some site meetings lined up. Um, uh, we're back to sort of update where we are and hopefully uh, ask to approve a uh, amendment to our uh, order conditions. So just to uh, back up, uh, Kyle, I don't know if you have a plan or if um, I'm able to share a plan either. Uh, you are able to share, but if you would like me, I can I can pull one up here as well. So it's really up to you. Sure. Uh, if you have one handy, that would be great. All right, give me Just one moment. I'll uh, try to get the most recent plan put together here. Yeah, I can grab it as well. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure this is the most recent plan. So give me one moment, please. Sure. I do have it here too. I'm happy to put it up. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you've got a handy, please, please go ahead. Yep. This is sorry, everyone for the delay. Share. Okay. Here we are. Uh, so a uh, quick history, if you recall, um, our original order conditions was to uh, solve a, a flooding problem we had on the parking lot, really shown in gray. Uh, this is really the back uh, entrance, but also the accessible, handicap accessible entrance to the Fuller Craft Museum. Um, uh, we had done that work, uh, completed everything in accordance with the original order uh, during really the, the major drought we were having. Uh, as we did that work, just as we came into fall, it finally started to rain. And since that point on, uh, we're not really sure why, but the what was an isolated wetland uh, to the south uh, west uh, in this area uh, became full of water, um, has never really gone down. And so every time it continues to rain, the water was flowing uh, over our new driveway and then across the new parking lot into our infiltration basin. 
uh, which is really water we were not expecting to have. Additionally, uh, the water from the pond uh, and the bordering vegetated wetland was uh, surcharging and actually backflowing into our infiltration basin. So our, our infiltration basin never had an opportunity to catch up. Uh, it was constantly full of water, which was not uh, something we had designed uh, for that to happen. So uh, more recently over the past winter, uh, because this condition uh, continued and we had uh, water and icing concerns, we had an emergency order to uh, cut a new channel between what was the isolated wetland uh, down to uh, the bordering vegetated wetlands, uh, which you can see in this area here, if you can see my cursor forth. Uh, we did do that. Uh, we did get an enforcement order to provide a little bit better uh, erosion controls and slope stabilization, uh, which uh, we did the best we could during the winter. And then in the spring, we came back with uh, seeding and whatnot, and it is, it's uh, much better stabilized now. It had a chance to go through a growing season. So uh, what we're asking for now as part of our amended order is to um, modify the drainage design uh, such that the water that uh, is filling in this, the large isolated wetland and overflow onto our parking lot uh, and then uh, over, over tax our infiltration basin. So what we have proposed to do um, is uh, first to uh, create a berm along the edge of the road, along that wetlands. Uh, we're proposing a landscape berm, but I'll get to that in more detail in a minute. Uh, that would keep the water in the wetlands. Uh, and then second, um, fill in what was just an overland overflow from our infiltration basin. We'll fill that in higher to prevent backfeeding into our infiltration basin and then provide a pipe outlet uh, back behind um, the museum. Uh, more directly into the pond. Uh, this outlet would be raised so the, the infiltration basin would capture the runoff it's supposed to, have a chance to treat it and infiltrate, and then any overflow would go through the pipe um, out to the wetland. Uh, we did have, uh, Beta did take a look at the plan and we did an opportunity to walk the site. Uh, the suggestion was made at that meeting as well to um, to widen the channel. The channel is about two feet and we're proposing to double that to four feet. Uh, you know, while the channel did help relieve some of the water in the large isolated wetland, uh, we were still seeing the water come up all the way to the pavement edge, uh, which we had never seen before. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to speak for Kyle and for Beta, but everyone uh, did acknowledge that the water level uh, was higher than uh, what appeared natural because of some of the trees that were uh, inundated above, um, above where they normally would have been and having seen some signs of stress. Uh, so it was clearly abnormally high. Uh, we did do quite a bit of research. We engaged the Brockton DPW uh, and others to try to help us find uh, where this extra water was coming from, but we've, we've, we've come up empty handed. We can't really pinpoint a solution as to why this is seeing more water suddenly. Uh, Steve Bernstein, who is on the line, has been working with the museum for multiple years and hasn't seen this condition. So it's a little bit of an anomaly, but uh, uh, long story short, what we're looking to do is, is widen out our channel between the two wetland systems, uh, raise our overflow and create a new overflow out to the back. Um, it's outside the buffer zone, however, but we're going to provide a, a small area drain uh, in this side of the museum as it's seeing some ponding there as well since we did our, our work, so um, which follows natural paths and the design stormwater paths around to the back of the, of the pond. <clears throat> um, uh, one of the suggestions, again, Kyle can get into it in his memo, was rather than a landscape berm along the edge of the road, was to put in an asphalt Cape Cod berm uh, to minimize any disturbance up close to the wetland limit there, which uh, we are okay with. Um, we didn't want to uh, propose that at first because we, we thought it was a little more of a You've lost connection, Tim? and it's very muddy, so uh, patrons are actually backing up and sinking in uh, if they go off the pavement. So we are uh, proposing just to strip that loam, put a little more gravel, and put loam back and reseed it just so it's a little, a little stronger uh, in the future. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. Happy to answer questions. And, and would you mind, Kyle? Do you, 
I'm muted. Uh, Tim, uh, sorry, pardon me. Um, could you, uh, you kind of broke up there. Would you uh, go back to where you were describing the Cape Cod berm and then go forward from there, please? Uh, sure. Um, uh, uh, I'll do the best I can to repeat it. I didn't have exactly written out. So uh, what's shown here in this big black line we had proposed as a landscape berm. Uh, I believe Kyle in his memo recommended making that a Cape Cod berm right on the pavement. Uh, and so there'd be no landscape berm there just to limit our impacts uh, up close to the wetlands uh, there. So uh, so rather than what's shown here of a landscape berm, this will just be a Cape Cod berm right along this extent uh, of the road. Uh, then I moved on to the last two pieces. Um, in this area, a small, an area drain, as we're seeing some uh, ponding uh, in this area since our work. Uh, on existing drain lines as where that will, will cut tie in. Uh, and second, this area that's clouded uh, is, is very uh, wet and muddy, a little bit too much loam, I think. So we're going to strip the loam, uh, put in some gravel and try to stabilize that so patrons, when they're backing up, don't sink into the ground. Mr. Powell, would you mind explaining? I, I don't know what a Cape Cod berm is. Sure. It's, uh, it's the asphalt curb uh, that you see, but it's not the... There's either the bread loaf one that's about six, in, six inches high and narrow. The Cape Cod one is the one that's a little more flat and angled. Uh, it's about eight to 12 inches wide. Um, it's formed by the paving machines. So the machine comes and just kind of places it right along the edge of the pavement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Where is the proposed channel? Uh, I will color this in. So uh, starting here and try to color it in. There we go. All right, right in this area, um, connecting these two wetland systems. So this wetland system here uh, was an isolated wetlands. Uh, when we connected the two with a, a channel, it actually made them hydraulically connected. So now uh, this system is a will become a bordering vegetated wetlands uh, and under jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission and future efforts. Is that okay to do to according to DP? DEP standards or beta? Um, so the uh, this commission already issued the uh, an emergency order allowing those to be connected. So uh, the current proposal now um, is not to do this for the first time, but actually to to just expand what's already there. Um, currently, the the when they went back in and and did this work, I think over this past winter. Uh, the machine that they had out there wasn't large enough to remove the boulders that are kind of there. So it did a very haphazard job at cutting a, a channel uh, between them. And, and so they are currently connected. Uh, but uh, this proposal uh, is is uh, involves a little bit more uh, uh, excavation and 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 more um, like the, the the proposed channel here is like a, a uh, an engineered channel rather than an emergency backhoe line that they've connected. So uh, you know that they've calculated flows and 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 have elevations that they're going to be hitting on this proposal. So uh, this is like an, an engineered channel versus what the, what's been done before, which is just kind of a kind of a you know haphazard connection. But but this has already been permitted. I guess Peggy is the point. It's just widening, right? Is it making it deeper as well? Yes, wider, wider and deeper. Is, is that that's that's correct, right, Tim? We're we're lowering uh, the channel. Uh, yes, just just slightly. Um, we just want to make sure we have. Uh, uh, I believe it's at least nine inches of depth of flow uh, below our um, pavement elevation. Uh, and the reason for that, just to. Um, give a little more detail. Beta had asked us to study the watershed of this isolated wetlands just upstream of our channel. So we did a quick watershed analysis uh, and determined um, you know, how big this needed to be to prevent flooding in the uh, over the road 
So in a 100-year storm event, which what we use is nine inches of rain over 24 hours uh, for the 100-year storm, uh, this channel would fill up about nine inches, and, uh, and that left us with a few inches uh, freeboard, if you will, before it starts to overtop into the road. So um, in, that, in that situation also, if there's 100, uh, you know, nine inches of rain, um, much of this site will be underwater, uh, irregardless of this piece. So we thought, felt that was a comfortable um, design. Uh, so nine inches deep but four feet feet. wide, is that correct? Uh, yes, so the grade on either side of this does go up. So if you were to look at it, it may look like it's you know 24 inches uh, deep, um, but we're gonna cut back the slopes, flatten them out, but it won't see that much, that depth of water. Um, you know, it will spill over the road and go in other directions before it reached that, that height and through our channel. So really okay. at max, there'd be the water, typically two to three and maybe four in you know, medium sized storms. Yeah. Would that be fenced at all in case of kids running around there? Um, we can talk to the museum about a fence. Um, I don't know if it's, know. you know, we're hoping that it's not going to be dramatic. Right now it's kind of dramatic just because of, as Kyle said, it was a small machine and kind of done an emergency situation. But we're hoping the banks are are softened that it's a, uh, you know, it's not so much of a, a a real tripping hazard. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, questions? Mr. Bernstein, do you have anything to add? I do not. Okay. Is there anyone from the public present that wants to speak to this? I do not see any hands raised, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. I have one more question about the channel. Um, what is being done to keep it open? Um, is it being lined with rocks or gravel or is it just left to chance? Uh, we're proposing to stabilize the banks uh, with a, um, uh, I forget what we said, if it's a New England, uh, yeah, New England erosion control restoration mix. Uh, and I believe our details just off the screen here uh, specify, have a little more specif specify what that is. Uh, on the bottom, um, I think uh, we can certainly add some stone across the bottom, but also, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's sometimes a benefit to a naturalized channel like this of the natural bottom for various reasons. So, um, but it is, it's fairly flat. Uh, it's not a steep channel. Uh, we don't have high velocities coming through here on a normal basis. So, even from what you can see out there today, the, the soil on the bottom of the channel is, is remained in place. Um, I'm more concerned just on the banks eroding. So we'll get those stabilized with the, the seed mix uh, and some, uh, some mesh. Thank you. Do you know if that, if, if it became dry again, <laughs> if ever, um, would that, have to be maintained at all to make sure that the, you know, that it stays open or um, necessary? I think it would require, I mean, typical, uh, similar to regular stormwater, it's probably best practice to include it under maintenance to make sure it's clear of any debris. Um, otherwise, we'll, you know, we may see. Yeah the repeat of what we had where water will uh, start to overflow onto the road and into our our own infiltration basin um so certainly that's something to, that could be maintained along the way if there's any major blockage mm -hmm. amended order of conditions is that what we're looking for now then right uh, yeah, that's what they are requesting. Um, so I, I just have a couple of comments, if if I may. Certainly. Um, so, uh, and this is kind of outlined in my agent report as well, but uh, this new design channel will kind of address the concerns that were raised in the enforcement order that was uh, issued uh, at the beginning of this year as well. Um, so that's kind of, if we if we approve this plan, that, that's kind of going to, uh, you know, fully address uh, the enforcement order. So that's kind of something we can kind of, you know, wash our hands of, I think. Um, 
uh, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the current plan uh, with a few changes is is something I think we we're, we should try. Um, at this point, we're just kind of trying to manage this this flooding that's happening on site. So, um, uh, and I think you know when we did our site walk, Tim and, and Steve and I and Gary, uh, we're all kind of in agreement that um, like this is probably the, the the best that we can do uh, currently at the site. Um, so uh, I I think that this is kind of the the way forward and. Um, I guess before we issue the amended order of conditions uh, tonight, there were a few things um, that need to be updated on the plan, uh, uh, Tim. So um, I, are you able to, to kind of modify the existing plan to show uh, the changes that we've kind of talked about tonight uh, and then submit that again uh, for the October meeting? Um, yes. Uh, so I apologize not having them sooner. I guess I read your memo that those would be added as conditions that we provide that. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I guess we could do that. I I, I was under the impression that we would get a, an updated plan that, that kind of shows that uh, that we would because we approved the plan. Uh, and I think it would be better if we just had those on the plan rather than having that in the order of conditions. Uh, sure. Either either way, whatever the commission's flavor, um, we'll have we can have the plan back to you tomorrow so um okay so the, uh, a couple other things uh, tim that, that yeah. i included are the stockpiling locations um limited work boundaries um and then where we're going to do erosion controls around uh the the constructed swale so i think it would be important to have those like on the actual plans for the people that are doing the work on you know on the ground sure okay, great thank you good thank you so we will expect then to have um, a completed plan submitted by the next meeting, at which time we will take action, hopefully, on um, amending, uh, approving the amended order, correct? Yeah, so, that sounds like a, a good game plan here. Okay. So then I would entertain that then as a motion, please, that um, we will continue to the next meeting, at which time we will receive um, that finalized site plan um, with all of those stipulations that are recommended. Someone make a motion, please. Unless you have other discussion. Ruby or Peggy, Laura, Sharifa. I make a motion to continue the hearing to October 4th for 455 Oak with all the updated uh, recommendations on the site plans. Second. The motion has been made and seconded for 455 Oak Street. Roll call vote, please. Speaker aye. Play aye. Curtis aye. Not aye. And Boris aye. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. And let's see. The next time on the agenda, 710 Oak Street. That was the car wash. Um, yeah, um, Phil Henry uh, is here. I've just promoted him to panelist. Hello. Mr. Henry. Well, and Jane, uh, Attorney Burke has his hand raised as well, Madam Chair. Hi, Mr. Burke. Hi, how are you? Uh, but I'm just going to let Phil uh, go ahead and take care of it. But this is a project that uh, we uh, have spent a great deal of time on. And uh, we went through the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board. And now uh, we need to. Uh, to get uh, confirmation uh, of, of the plans and the project from the Conservation Commission. Phil's done a great job. Take it away. Thanks, Jim. Uh, there should be also the, the applicant, uh, Kyle, Chris Fazio, should be online. Got it. Thank you. No problem. A good evening, Commission. Uh, my name is Phil Henry with Civil Design Group. We're the civil engineers on the project. We were first before you uh, probably in July, maybe even June. Um, and at that time, we introduced the project and, and uh, walked through the layout. So I, I won't do that tonight. Um, um, and, at that, and at that initial hearing, 
um, there were no, my notes tell me that there were no action items or, or um, issues that were expressed to us by this body, but the recommendation was to have it uh, reviewed. Um, since that time, we've worked with the reviewer to satisfy their, their comments. And um, through all their comments, um, the, I would say the, the, the major plan change was, which was fairly minor, was making sure that the Walmart runoff that run stormwater runoff that flows onto the property is, is handled and managed correctly. So um, the, the, the site plan itself and the stormwater management area associated with the car wash largely remained unchanged. There were some minor technical things that we went back and forth on, but, but essentially uh, the, the, the lawn area that remained as, um, as a section of this property has been transformed to, I, I called it a minor graded depression, which will allow water to pond should it need to in, in, in heavy rainfall events. So, so really over the past few months, that's really been the gist of, of what we've been working through. So um, I did see that um, a quote unquote clean letter came across my desk uh, by Elise around four o'clock today, I believe. So um, that's all that we have to present tonight. I'm happy, to, of course, to answer any specific questions, but other than that, we're looking to, to close the hearing. Mr. Holden, do you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, just a, a quick uh, kind of uh, back step here. Um, the, the site, uh, there are wetland resources on the site, but the predominant concern uh, as we reviewed this, as Phil alluded to, was the stormwater component. Um, and, and Beta has, uh, you know, as Phil said, has been going back and forth with the applicant. Uh, and yes, they, they, they all are at the point now where I think, um, you know, Beta is comfortable uh, issuing an order of conditions. And that's what's uh, reflected in this a uh, letter that Elise supplied uh, this afternoon. So um, that has been uploaded. I also emailed the the, the, the commission. It, there's not much detail in it um, of this letter. Um, and I also followed up with Elise to see if there were any special conditions recommended by Beta. Um, I did not hear back from her. So uh, that's something I could certainly follow up with tomorrow. Um, but you know, at this point, I think that you know, as far as I'm aware, you know, uh, all the all the concerns. Uh, have been met. Um, so I think that um, barring any special conditions that Beta wants to uh, submit at a later date, I think that we can issue an order of conditions with just the standard conditions um, at this point, unless there are other concerns that the commission wants to uh, to add as far as special conditions. Commissioners, any anyone care to add or have any concerns at all? No, and I. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? Says Mr. Burke. I don't see any hands raised, Madam Chair. Okay, Mr. Fazio, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. So with that, I would um expect that we could close the hearing. Entertain a vote to close the hearing. Make a. Uh, I'm sorry. I make a motion to close the hearing for 710 Oak Street. I second it. Roll call vote, please. Beaker, aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Matt, aye. And Voris, aye. So it has, the case has been closed. Um, and now I entertain a motion to um, issue an order of conditions for uh, 710 Oak Street. Um, Kyle, I'm not, with, with standard conditions, I'm not sure exactly how to word the thing that you, you know, the suggestion that you made in case Beta had special conditions, is that, can that be added after the fact or no? Um, I, you know, uh, we, we can, we can, we can, I think we can say we're gonna vote and then pending uh, Beta's response and I can just include uh, whatever, conditions that beta has if they have any um and then we can go from there but uh you know hopefully we'll get that response tomorrow and i can work on that order of conditions fill you know this week mr henry and mr fazio are you comfortable with that sure that's fine is that okay okay 
Yeah. We would entertain a motion then that we would issue an order of conditions with the standard conditions. Um, um, yeah. Pending anything that Beta might need to add that would be verified by Kyle. Is that okay? Yeah. I make a motion to issue an order of conditions um, with the standard conditions and also pending the beta report. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. A roll call vote, please. Be clear, aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Yep, aye. Move or aside. A motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Henry, Mr. Pazio. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mr. Thank Pazio. you, Kyle. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. Where are we? Number 12. We're at zero Hammond Street, correct? Uh, yes, yeah. that is correct. Um, uh, Attorney Burke is already uh, on, the, on as a panelist. I'm going to promote Josh White, who is the civil engineer for the project. And this is the. Uh, this is Zero Hammond Street, uh, or amended order of conditions and extension request. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Chairwoman uh, and members of the commission. Uh, since the last time we met, uh, we tried to get some clarification uh, because I think there's been a general misunderstanding of the nature and extent of the, the project and how it's moved forward. And as I suggested uh, in an email to uh, Kyle, uh, in fact, uh, uh, there was a question raised on whether or not they had begun the project. Uh, Mr. King in the email I said 150,000. He's he's in fact expended 184,000 dollars to date uh, on the project, which included uh, you know a drainage uh, issues of a fill and, and rubbing and clearing uh, in order to get to uh, the uh, area that we're now dealing with. So. Uh, uh, there was another concern that seemed to be raised uh, as to the uh, existence and nature of the uh, the flags uh, that had been uh, uh, set uh, as part of the prior uh, extension. Understand that, uh, and and we outreached uh, our botanist, uh, and we uh, uh, proactively uh, have engaged him to go ahead and uh, reflag the area. Uh, we're going to then have. Uh, uh, the engineer or surveyor uh, cite those flags. Uh, Josh will be talking in a minute. Uh, he himself went out to try to refresh uh, the flags that he could see. We don't expect there's going to be any substantive changes. So absolutely, uh, we're, we're happy to have a discussion with the commission about the extent of the uh, uh, wetland uh, uh, protection area, uh, the uh, jurisdictional area. But uh, what we request uh, is that you approve the request for the general extension uh, going forward, and then we can deal with uh, the issues that have been raised uh, by, uh, I think, the commission uh, and Kyle as we uh, uh, slog through, as it were, uh, the request for an amendment. Uh, Josh, do you want to go ahead and, and uh, give them the up to date on what work we've done? You with us, Josh? I am. Thank you, Jim, uh, for that intro. Uh, so just for the record, Josh White from JDE Civil. Um, so like Jim mentioned, um, I I personally went out uh, to this site um, last week, uh, same as I did um, for the previous extension, and found, uh, I want to, probably 80% of the flags um, some of them were the original ones, some of the ones that we hung um, with the last extension. Um, so most of the pl flags are there. And uh, like Jim mentioned, we've engaged the same botanist that did it originally. Um, we're working on getting him out there to look at and compare the lines. Um, like Jim mentioned, we'd like to handle that with the with the amendment um going forward and if there's any other uh comments that come up um i'd like to share my screen just for a quick second to um show something if i can
Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. So this is the site in uh, October of 2020. Um, you can see the easement that crosses through um, the electric easement. And then that's the existing cemetery. And then off to the south is uh, the uh, landfill area that's off the property. Um, and just note the, the limit of trees um, here. And then I'm just gonna move forward. That's October of 21. So as you can see, the site has been cleared. Um, a lot of the um, tree cutting and grubbing uh, was completed. The entrance off of Thatcher Street has uh, the base has been constructed. There's even drainage structures installed in that uh, roadway as well, as well as um, an outlet. And I believe if I go one more, you can kind of see this this black line. That's the extent of the perimeter erosion trolls that have been in, that were installed in um, February of 2021. Uh, most of them are in fairly decent shape, um, but like in this area where you can see these giant trees have fallen down in the last couple of years, um, Doug uh, Doug King expects to have to replace a portion of these perimeter erosion controls as the project develops. So that's just um, typical construction stuff um, that would occur on the site. But we, we really just wanted to make note to the commission because we we acknowledge that it's all new people here. It's all new members. So it's and it's a project that's been going on for a while. So we really just wanted to give everybody a start to finish, uh, see where we are today. And um, that's um, stop sharing my screen because that's that's basically all we um, we wanted to accomplish tonight. Um, and uh, I let um, the uh, Concom agent, uh, Kyle, if you've got any comments, you can through the chair, please. Through the chair, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Josh. Um, I've just got a question. I wasn't taking notes as you were describing that. Can you uh, go, you don't have to go back, but uh, when when approximately do you think the, uh, all, all those trees were removed from the site there? It was after October of 2020. Okay, thank you. So that would have been after the previous extension. Sure. Um, so just to, just to clarify uh, my comments in my agent report, um, I pulled that language uh, where I said that there was no work that had been done other than the uh, the, the erosion controls uh, from your presentation at the uh, must have been the the June uh, meeting. So I recognize that yes, it's clear that there has been some uh, you know tree removal, um, and that was uh, done during the. Uh, the most recent round of amendments, um, because that the the uh, the most recent amendment, um, uh, the, the recent the most recent amended amended order of conditions was issued on uh, November fifth of twenty twenty. So within that window, there's clearly has been some work done. But uh, I kind of got my language from uh, the presentation that you guys gave uh, initially. So um, understood. Uh, yeah, I, I can, you know, uh, that that's clearly just kind of a miscommunication. I acknowledge that clearly some some work has been done on the site there. Um, so as far as the extension goes, um, I, I, I still think that uh, a, a large portion of my uh, agent report that I've submitted is, is at least relevant for the commission to consider here. Um, there are two things that are kind of before the commission at this point. There's the amended order because we're, we're modifying the, the site plans. And then there's also the extension request. Um, and kind of what I'm laying out in my agent report is that we should probably decide on the extension request first, uh, because if we decide not to extend, then the amended order kind of just dies. That that request just dies if the project exceeds its extension date, which is uh, January uh, of 2024. Um, so that's kind of what I kind of put forth in my agent report is that the commission should decide on whether or not they're comfortable issuing another extension to this project. And then after that is decided, uh, then we can deal with this other portion of uh, either either an amended order of conditions or potentially a new order, uh, a new notice of intent 
if uh, we do not extend uh, the order of conditions. Um, so that's kind of broadly what I had in my agent report. Um, just a couple things for everyone to be aware of. Uh, the Wetlands Protection Act uh, does not have any limit to how many times you can extend an order of conditions. Uh, there's no upper limit. You can do it indefinitely. Uh, on the other hand, there is no, uh, there's no language that uh, says a, a commission is compelled to issue an order of conditions uh, either. So, um, you know, it, it's really up to the discretion of the commission. You mean an extension? There's... Yes, I mean an extension. What did I say? Order of conditions. Okay, well, yeah, so so it, it, that's all true of, of an extension. So there's no upper limit to how many times you can extend, but there's also no uh, requirement that an extension be granted if applied for, I guess. Thank you, Joyce. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner's discussion, thoughts on the matter. So would, it, so would it make sense for to file a new notice of intent to kind of, I guess, bring it forward with what currently is existing? Because it sounds like we're kind of basing things off, you know, years back. Well, like, is so there... Any yeah, if I, if I may, uh, and I'll, I'll allow uh, Mr. White or Mr. Burke to speak to this as well, because obviously they have a different opinion. But uh, it's kind of my thought that at this point, um, you know, this this has been uh, an open order for, let's see, the, the initial order of the conditions was issued in 2015, uh, in, in the beginning of 2015. So uh, this is a years long project. And I recognize that, like, you know, work has been done. And this is something that that, that I didn't you know, factor in in my initial agent report. So I acknowledge that the, the, the problem that I have is that this is such an, uh, a long-term project and there have been so many different versions of plans put forth. It's very hard to parse out, uh, you know, what changes were applied when, uh, you know, obviously we know what the most recent plan is, but just through this whole process, it's kind of a, uh, you know, kind of hard to keep track of things. Uh, the other comment that I have is that, um, you know, uh, and, and Attorney Burke was mentioning that they are willing to go and refresh some of these flags. Uh, the wetland flag delineations are generally good for about three years. But again, since this project has been ongoing since 2015, um, we just need to be aware and make sure that we're kind of keeping track of that as we move through time here. So I think, you know, if we do go out and, uh, and uh, you know, address those wetland lines, um, this project could certainly be uh, be addressed through an amended order. Uh, I just think it would be cleaner uh, to go through and just do a new filing because uh, the proposed work here is just a vastly different plan than what was initially proposed in 2015. And, and yes, there have been stepwise iterations that have kind of brought us up to this point, but it's just it's it's a different project. Um, and I think that overall, you know, if the applicant has to go back and, and, and do and renew the, the, the delineations uh, and, and do all, all the new calculations for everything that we would be requiring with an amended order uh, of this scope, because they are bringing in fill and, and raising the grade of the entire phase one area. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do that work myself. I can't review stormwater. Um, so this is something that beta is going to be involved in and, and they're going to be doing the review. And based on my discussions with beta, uh, they're just concerned also with the cost of this project. And they think it'll be um, it'll be probably easier and cleaner for them to do the review if it's just a new filing um, rather than having to sift through all this historical data. And um, but but again, this is not something that we couldn't do with an amended order. I just think it would be cleaner um, and we can kind of get a fresh start. Uh, with a new notice and intent. I don't think there's anything here that that's that's that that would stop us from doing from completing this project. Um, but it's on the administrative side. How do we want to handle this moving forward? Um, so I guess I will allow Attorney Burke or Josh, uh, Mr. White, to um, to, to to respond. Um, sure, I'll jump in. To make uh, it, 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 in fact, you're right. Uh, projects like these, uh, uh, for various reasons, take time. Like the industrial boulevard that you work with today in which you had, I think, gone through three extensions uh, and you were considering that issue before. It, it, it's a similar pattern because it's a very large project. What, what concerns me about the new filing and, and the general concerns of the commission is, for example, the groundwater. Unless the groundwater impacts a jurisdictional uh, area, it, it's irrelevant uh, as to what the fill is, how high the fill is, or, it, or the scope of the project. And in fact, Josh, I hope uh, will speak up, but I think he has made it absolutely clear 
that they have done calculations and he sees absolutely no uh, increase in, 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 in groundwater as it impacts uh, the resource areas. Uh, and, and Beta's concern about spending ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to review a project in which the only issues relate to that that touches upon resource areas, I think is problematic. Uh, and, and that's why I think we should proceed uh, with the amendment uh, as we had suggested. Uh, it, it, it allows for this duplicity of, of, of costs and expenses that seems to be prevalent in the city uh, on development projects. And I think it's a major concern. Uh, so Mr. King uh, is, is ready to go with this project. The issues that he's doing in the amendment have virtually no impact on the resource areas. And the rest of the project that are outside of jurisdictional issues really are irrelevant to the discussion. And, and I, I think we're seeing this as one big pie that we're all looking to dissect, but that isn't the case. Josh, would you talk about what your relative findings are? Um, through the chair, please. Thank you, Mr. Through, through the chair, if, if you will allow him to comment, uh, we would like him to go ahead and, and, and relate his findings. Okay, now, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Jim. So uh, I've got the plans up on my screen um, and I just wanna take a step back and kind of look at the whole project as a whole. So this is the easement that cuts through the property. There's two wetland areas here, series D and series B, both are within the easement. There's no work proposed in these phases. Phase three is a future phase way down the road, who knows, when they uh series c is this uh series over here um off of the proposed cul-de-sac and proposed road nothing is changing down here no grade changes no nothing same with this entranceway the drainage and grading that was proposed before Staying the same. There's no there's no changes. This has is partially installed today. And to the north, the A series, which is I think the only one that's really applicable to this grading change to phase one A, which is this whole top side of this cemetery. The area within the orange is the hundred foot buffer zone, which the conservation commission has jurisdiction. That's the only area that is uh, that could potentially be impacted by these grade changes. We initially, when we submitted this uh, request, um, it was asked that we provide an updated drainage report to encompass these revisions. We did that, and we've we ran the numbers. They're not any worse and they're better um, as far as peak runoff rates to the various design points from that were done originally. These numbers that you see right here on my screen, they're all less than what was previously approved. Excuse if, me, Mr. White, is that the area that's going to be running off into that small, relatively small um, area of concern? Is that what you're saying? So this is the existing drainage area map. The area that we're focused on is this existing wetland, which we're calling design point four. Mm -hmm. um, this is generally the area that was draining to that mm -hmm. area. And then And this is the design, this is the design point. This is the area that's going to that. Everything okay. else is being controlled by this basin to other design points. So that basin three, is that a retention basin for runoff? Yes. Okay, so there will be runoff that's different. 
correct? Because of the grading, it will it will require a, a, a retention basin that was not there before. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. That basin's been there the whole time. So that basin is there already. And has not changed. We did not make any modifications to that design of that basin. The only thing that changed is the wall in the back of the property and the grading. Besides, okay. besides that, the peak runoff rates, which are required from stormwater management to be met, are met and are lower than the previously approved design. And that's peak runoff rates to? To each of the design points that have been agreed upon from uh, whoever peer reviewed it before. I believe it was uh, Nova Armstrong, I believe. Um, but those numbers, nothing, none of these basins have changed. So the original plan was to dig things out, but now it's to put put fill on top and and that wouldn't change the drainage that wouldn't change the stormwater flow no the the only thing that would change would be the uh the the rate at which it the runoff flows over land from anywhere over here to this uh basin but we've ran the numbers um and they still meet the existing rates so therefore we're we believe we're still in compliance and and it i mean i personally feel as though that could be evaluated do had a peer review that should have a peer review um to make sure that the current model which is substantially different from what your original plan was should be take that someone should take a look at it to make sure that your numbers are accurate we we require that frequently with most 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 applicants that a peer review be done for stormwater. I don't understand why this should be exempt from that. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can, and and maybe through you to uh, uh, Josh, is it my understanding, Josh, what you're saying is that the the impact of the flow goes to the detention basin. If I may, yes, because my, I, I want to get to the point. If, if the flow is not going to a resource area or is impacting a resource area, it's irrelevant what the groundwater is. It's irrelevant what the flow is if it does not impact a jurisdictional resource area. I believe there are stormwater regulations now in Brockton, are there not? But they they're not through the Conservation Commission. Mr. Holden, can you clarify for me, please? Because I was under the understanding that as we go through CONCOM, if we find um, items that are of stormwater importance, that they are, they get peer reviewed at that time. Um, yeah, I can speak to that. I've got a couple couple other comments as well, if that's okay. But but specifically about the stormwater issue, um, yes, that 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 has been historically how we've been approaching stormwater for the city of Brockton. Now. Uh, as of this week, um, the uh, city council just voted to basically disband the current stormwater authority and reform a different uh, uh, body that will be in charge of uh, stormwater uh, uh, ordinance management for the city. Um, I am on the new body. I was on the old body. Uh, but the point is, it is kind of in flux now. But but to your point, Madam Chair, is yes, historically before like this actual week, um, anything that was handled that 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 conservation had that had stormwater issues, uh, the 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 strategy for the stormwater management authority was for that to be handled with or without you know WPA jurisdictional status. If it's coming before the commission, we were also to review it for stormwater uh, standards for the city of Brockton um, while it's there. So you don't have to go through. Uh, Concom, and then also through multiple other uh, uh, review processes, if we can just do it all in one place. So yes, that was the that was the strategy as of last week. I don't know what the strategy is as of this week. Um, un unclear as to what what the what 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 the what the city's kind of strategy moving forward will be. But 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 yes, uh, 
it is, you know, as of last week, it was within, uh, uh, you know, uh, the city's uh, purview to, to review the storm, the entire site's stormwater um, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, compliance with the, with the city stormwater standards. Um, well, it's not part of the ordinance, is it, uh, uh, through the chair to Mr. Holden? I mean, can you point to anywhere in the ordinance that gives the authority of the Conservation Commission to affect the groundwater uh, as it relates to anything other than a resource area? No, that was through the, uh, yes, it, you're right. That was through it's the, a the, custom the and practice, that, you're saying. What, I'm sorry? It's a custom and practice. Is that what you're saying? As far as, yeah, yeah. So, I, no, I, I, I'm not super familiar with the actual language of the ordinance, but but the way that we administered that ordinance uh, up to last week, which is, again, no longer the case, uh, but the way that we had, the strategy that we were implementing was that if any project through planning board, through CONCOM, uh, through any other uh, board that, that, that was reviewing site plans, if there was a stormwater component there, it was up to that 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 body to confirm uh, uh, you know stormwater standards uh, that that are met for the city of Brockton, uh, well, rather I, than going through and then doing all these other bodies and then also going through the stormwater authority as a separate application process. Well, we don't have a local through the chair. Uh, we we yes. don't have a local ordinance, uh, and 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 the the Wetlands Protection Act does not provide jurisdiction over that. Unless it impacts a resource area, so Mr. Burke, if that's a if that's a concern that you have, Attorney Burke, I mean, you're going to have to talk to the the city solicitor. I I, no, I do not it, I do not it's know what the what, law is. So as a as a body of the city government, uh, there there are kind of two separate things here. If that's something you would like to dispute, again, this may not even be the case moving forward. But like, I don't know uh, that the answer to that question. I guess so. I would suggest that you contact the legal department for the city. So, Mr. Burke, just for clarification, yes, stormwater and groundwater are two very different things. Well, well, then whether it's stormwater or groundwater, if it doesn't impact a resource area, my, my position is exactly the same. Well, my concern is that with a different, with a different kind of a plan that you are submitting, that it would affect stormwater, um, not groundwater, but, um, and we would just like to have that looked at with data. That that but, is. But, Madam, there is no jurisdiction to authorize that. And what we're getting into, and it's, as I said, it's out of control uh, what's going on in the city. And we've raised it to the mayor. Uh, you, you refer it calmly to beta, and all of a sudden we have a twenty dollars or $30,000 bill that's absolutely unnecessary. And, and that's a topic of discussion in the city right now. Developers are, are, are winding up, subsidizing large portions of the consultants who, in fact, frequently charge more than the original design in their review. It's it's out of control. I, I understand your frustration. That's a reality. The fact remains that this particular um, this particular project has originated in 2015, right? Correct. Is that correct? And I personally, since I personally would like to deny the extension request and ask for a, a notice of intent to begin again. I, I think that uh, is something that uh, you certainly can do uh, because you are a an active chair, but I'm just pointing out to you again, w when you do that, you do that without any basis of jurisdiction under the uh, state statute. It is just uh, a determination you've reached for personal reasons. Not and it relates to an it relates to an issue not covered under the Wetlands Protection Act. I, I, I not for personal reasons at all. We we're not even sure if those particular areas are exactly as they were in 2015. You're talking about the resource area. Yes. Oh, yep. understood. And we certainly agree with that. And in fact, as it relates to the amendment, we certainly will get into that in great detail. Yeah. And that's that's why we look to bifurcate to grant the extension of the original order and then get into the meat of the issue 
which is jurisdictional, uh, with uh, our botanist, our engineer, and uh, the review of the city. as it relates to the resource area. Which will have to be reviewed anyway. Well, most assuredly, and, and it could it well be done as we've suggested uh, in the request for an amended order. Kyle, uh, your hand is up. Uh, yes. Um, so a couple comments. Um, so the first comment is uh, Beta is under contract with the city um, currently uh, for for review, uh, not just for Conservation Commission, but for Planning Board. Um, and this is all under contract. So if, if you have a problem with the, and you're not the only person I've heard complaints from about this, but uh, everything, uh, there are standardized rights that are written into that contract. Um, so I would suggest that if that's a problem that you wish to see uh, addressed, uh, that you... Uh, go to the proper place and, and 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 address that in the future when that contract is up for renewal. That's not something that we can modify here today. Uh, we're, we're kind of locked in on that. So that's that's the first point. Um, well, you're not locked into referring it. Well, you know, you're, you're not let, obligated to refer it. Pardon me, sir. If you let me let me continue here. I do not have the expertise myself to review stormwater plans. Now, Josh, uh, I, I, I recognize that you you put these numbers up here, but that's that's that that's may as well not even be in English to me. I I can't uh, recommend to the commission one way or the other. Uh, you know, that could be a, an English report from a seventeen you know a seventh grader, and I I couldn't tell you the difference. So that is why I need someone that that can do that review for me uh, to to say oh well that that this is this is all all this math checks out because I can't do that myself. I don't have the expertise. So. That's why that we need to, to to review this with beta. Now we're 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 completely off off kilter and, and target here, but we've already approved beta's review of this. This has already happened. Um, we put a hold on that. Beta put a hold on that because they didn't want to waste the applicant's money if this project wasn't extended. So I suggest that we we get back to the extension request uh, piece of this. Um, and uh, we can make a decision. It doesn't even have to be tonight. This is, can be something that can be continued. I want to point out for the rest of the, 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 the commission that this uh, the current order of conditions doesn't expire until January of 2024. So we have months to issue an extension or deny an extension if we want to put this off for this evening, just as a, as a, as a general comment. Um, I guess... Uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of all that I've got for now. Thank you. A quick question, Kyle. When you said that a beta would be reviewing it, would they also be reviewing the wetland delineation as well? Well, yeah, they, I mean, we, we initially, uh, that would probably be part of it. Yeah, because, uh, and, and just generally speaking, even if you're about the uh, about the stormwater, uh, you know, the, the elevation lines we have on this plan that Josh currently has up, um, if you're changing the uh, the way that the water is flowing and you're moving more water away from the wetland, that also can have an impact on the wetland resource area. So it's not just about not, you know, so it, it, I don't have that expertise. So so that's why beta needs to be involved in this. And the way that these things are, are designed is that the design in the middle of this plot and the elevation and grades there have an impact on the way that the water flows across the entire site that can have an impact on the jurisdictional area. So even though that's outside of the, of the 100 foot buffer zone, uh, the grades on the site plan affect that, that jurisdictional area. So there should be no question on whether or not beta is, should be allowed to do a stormwater review on this. I, th that's absolutely not in question in my mind at all. Um, and we've already kind of uh, agreed to have them do that. We have held off on that because we don't want to, Build the build the applicant for something that's not going to be relevant if the if a new notice of intent is required to be filed. So that's that's why it's been held off until we kind of can decide how we want to uh, deal with the extension request first. Commissioners. I don't feel like I have enough information to make a decision, um, especially in view of the fact that uh, we generally depend on 
Kyle's um, uh, reports and um, the fact that 2015 is a long time for things to change over time. Um, so I'm not feeling comfortable right now. Ruby, do you have any feelings one way or another? Um, I agree. Uh, I guess I guess I have a problem with the fact that the project has gone this long and we're like we don't know the exact historicals and then again us just finding out that the stormwater situation has now changed with the city and all these different factors that are in here. Maybe we continue it until we get more information or better under you know what I mean understanding it sounds like attorney Burke is um, has quite a f few frustrations with the process in regards to how things are being handled with certain some of these things in the city or whatever that kind of are out of scope of what we have available for us but I think that in all fairness so that all parties um, are aware or equipped or have a better understanding of things. And we do rely on what beta kind of the feedback. We don't know anything about the numbers of elevation flows with the water and that whole thing. Maybe we just need to be, get a little bit more information so we can make a, 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 a more conscious decision about the extensions, especially with it, you know, we have a little bit of time to do so. So are you saying that we should just continue? And I mean, I, I don't want to continue unnecessarily if. I, I want to, I mean, if we need the, re, I mean, so how do we, so we, do we issue the the extension and everything else comes on the back end? It, it, it Does that help us move forward with what needs to be done for this? How long is the extension for? Is it for three years? Yeah, three years. generally for three oh. years, yes. Until 2027. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a long time. But again, if, if I may, the extension only allows you to build the original project. So, uh, and the original project, and the real changed. project is not going to be built because the original project has changed. That's exactly that's why the amendment is in place. So granting the extension would create no harm because you wouldn't lose any jurisdiction or authority or overview or supervision. I'm not concerned about overview or supervision. I'm just concerned that it seems to be a completely different um, plan compared to the one that was was um, brought forth in 2015. And that, that plan is completely different now. And but, but it's, why it's not only... just start all over again with a whole new NOI, go out, make sure that the, the, the resource areas are correct, and then work from there. I'm, I'm not sure why that's difficult to do. Expensive. Uh, it's yeah. it's it, time delay uh, uh, kills projects. How much more expensive is it? How much more time? Well, I, I, it's not my money. I'm quite frankly not sure. But I, you, you can you can see the wheel is going to turn again on, on the uh, consultant review. Why hasn't the project been completed since 2015? That's uh, it, well. There are many issues. I, I I'm not the developer. I'm sure COVID had a lot to do with it. Uh, economic conditions had a lot to do with it. Uh, and in fact, it's not unusual to have projects linger, like the one you were dealing with today on Industrial Boulevard, Oak Hill Way. Yeah, but that one is the same plan. It's not like the plans have changed. Well, well, it's but the it's, very it's, same plan. It's a delay. But it's still the same plan. It's not like the entire plan is now altered. We're and still and, and it, same plan. Ex exactly, which which leads to our position that you can deal with the changed plan with the requested amendment, which you can uh, hopefully approve when you determine it has virtually no impact on the resource areas that are jurisdictional. Yeah, which is having well, to, having to like, go ahead, Josh. You, you can't really say that there's no impact on the resource area when eight years have gone by with erosion and flooding and rains and wind and winters. Um, so that's an exceptionally long time. 
to make a decision on a plan that's eight years old that's actually been changed? Uh, well, the, since nothing was done in the area, the, 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 the plan wouldn't have impacted the resource area. Nature may have impacted the resource area, but nothing we did. Uh, so you can, in fact, check to determine whether the flags are appropriate. But sure. how, where do I rely on that information? Uh, that's what Josh does for a living. Spurt, removal of trees will alter where, uh, resource areas in, in nearby areas. Well, uh, certainly your wind could too. A anything could, but the, but the, the reality is uh, there there is virtually nothing being done, uh, uh, you know, in, inside of the resource area. Yeah, and since it was previously approved in 2020, the erosion controls have been in place. So, and the sites stabilized. So, it the resource areas are protected. But the site plan is very different from 2020. What you've just presented to us this year is a different plan than what it was in 2020. And you've had some removal of trees in that whole area, which could potentially affect the resource area in, in addition to the plans. And, a and, very so, and you I certainly think. can deal with that with the amendment, which is exactly uh, the, 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 the correct way to go in this situation, yeah. as How, it was for Industrial Boulevard. Yeah. Okay. Like, like the other um, applicant or engineer mentioned earlier, having a second NOI, a second DEP file number open on a property can happen. It, it creates a whole bunch of uh, issues, uh, which is totally separate from just the engineering part of it. But like uh, not to get into it, but having to get new abutters list, go through the whole submittal with the new filing fees, basically starting from scratch, all putting aside if the wetland line changes, then we have to change our plans, designs, consultant designs, and then it gets to you guys. We have to submit the whole new fee, and then we're going to have to pay, or well, the applicant's going to have to pay even more. So it, in our mind, go with the amendment. We can compare it, compare the old line with the new line, if there is a new line, and just roll with it, because having to start from scratch just seems silly. Mr. Holden? I I don't hear you. All right, yeah, thank you. Um, no, I was just gonna point out that, that, that as far as like a new filing fee, like you had to do filing fees for the amended order of conditions. Um, I, I think that we're kind of like getting lost in the weeds here. I, I think at this point, uh, you know, tempers are, are higher than they need to necessarily be for this. I suggest we continue this to the next meeting. Uh, we can kind of think about what every party has said here and uh, we can kind of hash this out at the October meeting or moving forward. Uh, we're under no time constraint here uh, uh, at all. Like, you know, the, 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 we need to, the, the, the time constraint is we need to, we need to decide to issue the extension or not by the first of the year. Um, and it's September 20th. So we have months to, to kind of hash all this out. So I, I would recommend that we continue the next month and uh, we can have we can further the discussion then. Yes, Josh. So I do recognize that we do have time to kind of sort through this and make heads and tails of everything. But in the in the meantime, what are we what are we supposed to do? Just wait until the next meeting and wait till 930 at night and keep talking about this or. How do we how do we move forward and make progress? I guess is my question. What are your plans on the site now? What will you be doing there tomorrow? I'm not the applicant or builder, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess Josh. I mean, wh why the sense of urgency now? This has been open since 2015. Uh, you know, we have done some work here on the site, some clearing, but like, you know, another two weeks until October 8th, 4th to kind of, you know, I, I don't think that's going to make or break anybody. No, I'm not, I'm not worried about like getting ready to start doing whatever. I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything neat we need to be doing before October 4th or November, whatever the meeting is, just kind of our readers waiting. Perhaps you could get the uh, 
area delineated, just to re get that resource area evaluated. Would that be unreasonable? No, nope. that was our plan, Ma uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, and that's what we've, we're, we're doing. Uh, well, we, we tried to push them out there and we'll hopefully it'll get it done if you do continue it by that day. And, and another option is we can we can allow beta to begin the peer review and send it the scope and fee and get that funded. You know, if that's if that's something that we want to do, that is an option. But we, we held back on that uh, to try to make sure that we weren't like double charging the applicant. But if we're dead set on moving forward, I can email beta tomorrow and have them, you know, set up the scope and fee and get that sent out. Perhaps that might be the better way to go. Yeah, that's fine with me. Jim, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I, I I think you raised a brilliant thought. What do we do to move it off center? Uh, and and if 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 that's the only way we can move it off center, then uh, we will deal with it, uh, and we will work with Kyle to see what the scope of services are uh, to make sure that they don't exceed. Uh, what is appropriate in this project? Okay, well, um, I, I've been uh, deciding how to how to approach this from the city's perspective, Attorney Burke, uh, because I, you know, again, with that kind of transition, um, the the chair of the new stormwater uh, group, I'm not sure what the, the formal name of this is going to be, is going to be Pat Hill of the uh, the Department of Public Works. Um, so I've been meaning to to kind of get in touch with him and and at least uh, kind of get some guidance here because, you know, the, the problem is it's going to be uh, Pat Hill, uh, myself, another person from finance, three people from the city, and then there are going to be three appointed members from the community. I don't know that we can even make any decisions about how uh, this, this group is going to be handling stormwater issues until we get those three people appointed uh, from the community at large. So this may not be a, a quick answer, but uh, that's certainly something that I'm wanting to get uh, kind of addressed Kind of completely separate from this issue so uh, i can kind of keep you up to date uh on that as that progresses over the next couple of weeks stormwater is so complex and so i mean there is a state statute is there not that each city has to have a mechanism by which to um control stormwater or to govern stormwater well, there, there there is there's a state ordinance but then also the state has required the the brockton develop and maintain a, a a local ordinance as well i'm not sure if that's true of every municipality across the state or if that's just specific places but brockton is required by the state to have a local ordinance yes and i'm not sure how you do that without having professional consultants because it is an extremely technically difficult uh, you know, it, it requires a lot of judgment and technical expertise, I think. But anyway, can we please, <laughs> if you would do that then, uh, Mr. Holden, if you could get in touch with um, Beta and to see if you can do the scope and fee and perhaps have Beta take a look at this. Yeah, we can do I, that. That seems to be the best way to go right now. So that way we'd at least have some answers. And I, if they can get it done before January, that would be even Better. Well, yeah, I think certainly before January, I, I don't know that they'll have it put together by the October 4th meeting, but they can yeah, at least get the scope and fee moving and we can get started on the process. So. And yeah. And Mr. White, if your if your group could do something with evaluating the delineation of that particular resource area and um, having it evaluated for a wetland delineation, that would be wonderful. Yeah, we'll work on that and we hope to hopefully we can have an update for the uh, October meeting. Okay. That sounds fine. Good. So we will then continue this. If um, commissioners, how do you feel about that? Okay. If we just continue the um, the hearing on zero Hammond, I'll entertain a motion for that. With the referral motion to Beta. to um, continue uh, zero Hammond Street uh, to the October fourth uh, meeting, and to uh, refer to Beta. And to refer uh, to beta for the project to the beta. Is Laura did Laura second it? Uh yes, uh Laura had to leave. Seconded Ruby? Seconded. Yes. Okay. So the motion has been made and seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Clay aye. Curtis aye. Map I. 
for a side. So that motion has been passed. We will see you next month. Josh, Good evening. Mr. Burke. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so number 13, 14, 15 and 16 have all been continued, correct? That is correct. Next item on the agenda then is number 17, 30 Oak Street Extension. Uh, yeah, so this is the project that, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, I did not reach out to uh, the property owner here. Um, I went out to the site yesterday and, and kind of looked at this. Uh, this is a this is a violation or discussion uh, violation uh, notice that we sent out uh, where they kind of added an extra little bit of pavement to their parking lot for uh, the dumpsters to sit on and they pushed the existing gravel into a resource area. So what they've done is they've gone through and they've removed the gravel. They've they've started a restoration planting. They've they've ordered uh, like like actual plant plugs and have planted those. Uh, and they also, I, I think that they, they've shown me receipts of a, a wildlife mix seed mix that they've seeded around, but the seed mix has not, uh, not, not taken hold. Um, so it's still very bare and not stabilized. So at this point, um, I was hoping that I would go back, you know, this month and I would see that it was stabilized through there. Uh, it isn't yet. Uh, so I think at this point, um, I'm going to have to get back in contact with them and suggest that they reseed it. Um, and, and so unfortunately I don't think we can close this this matter out tonight. So I will be back in contact with them um, and, and suggest they reseed uh, that area to get it stabilized. Kyle, it seemed to me from the photos that it almost looked like gravelly. What do you know what Yeah, I'm not, you know, yes, it's not it's not the gravel that they they pushed off. That that's not okay, I'm, okay. I'm not okay. sure where Fine. they got the where they got the the material to grade that. Um I think it's I think it'll be fine. When, I mean it, it's kind of already a degraded area anyway. Uh, but I would just like to see it stabilized at this point. Okay. So you'll just follow up on that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just follow up on this and, you know, it, it may not be on the agenda next month. If it takes a couple months to get it, you know, stabilized, I was hoping it would be something we could get off the agenda this evening. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a, a new enforcement order. Is that correct? 411 Warren Avenue? Yes. Um, and I don't, I don't think we have any more attendees. Everyone's abandoned us tonight. Um, so, uh, I did request that the property owner attend this meeting tonight. I did not see her in the attendees, um, at all, uh, earlier, but I wasn't like super looking for it. Um, so, uh, basically just to give, uh, the, the commission a little bit more context, I can show you some photos as well. Um, but this is a new enforcement order. Uh, I basically got a call to go out and, uh, to check out some, some fill that had been, was being added, uh, on, on. A, a brook, I think it might be Salisbury Brook. I, I'll have to check my notes, but um, basically uh, this this property, uh, uh, they were, um, they built kind of a retain, they, they, first off, they're right on the riverfront. They're they're right adjacent to the to the brook. Uh, awesome. And the brook is sits down in a channel, maybe eight eight feet down. Uh, so they're, 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 there's quite a big uh, elevation change from the bottom of the brook to where the property kind of begins. What they were doing is they were kind of building an impromptu uh, retention uh, uh, wall uh, and then putting fill behind it, right, right on the drop off, uh, adjacent to the to the single family home. Um, and and in, in addition to doing that, they were actually excavating uh, the, the the basement to get the material to put out on the yard. So uh, the the building was shut down initially uh, for safety concerns because uh, they were you know uh, undermining the foundation. I think it's since been opened back up, but in any case. Um, this 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 kind of uh, filled uh, retention wall uh, will need to be removed. Basically, um, it's not permitted, and even if it were permitted, you would have to go about uh, doing it the right way. There's all sorts of, of not clean fill that's being used uh, to to kind of fill that void behind the retention wall. So let me uh, pull up some photos real quick, and I'll kind of show that to you just so you can kind of see what we're talking about, and then I will reach back out to the uh, the property owner and say that they need to come to the October meeting. Um, and then we can hopefully establish contact and then uh, start working with them to develop a restoration plan. So um, was, this sent, was this sent by uh, certified mail? Uh, yes. And uh, I don't know that I got a green slip for it, but I, I, I've, I've, I've spoken to the to the property owner and I've got her cell phone uh, number so I can give her a call tomorrow. So let me uh, pull up some photos and I'll share my screen. Maybe. All right.
Okay, um, so are you able to see this? Okay, so you can see here they've kind of built this retaining wall uh, out of plywood and some stumps kind of holding this back. Uh, I've got some other angles, but you can see here there's all this crushed concrete um, and, and things. They're actually making the wall out of out of like reused uh, you know construction materials, you know broken bricks, pieces of uh, of broken concrete, you know just whatever they can find, and they're kind of mortaring it together with concrete. Uh, to, to actually make the structural component of the wall, which is obviously dangerous. Um, so let's see what else we can get here. Is the brick on the other side of that fence? Uh, yeah. So basically, just on the other side of the fence, it drops down like six to eight feet to the to the bed of the brook. This is a this is a wide stone channeled uh, brook right through here. Um, but yeah, so you can see it's maybe a three foot drop here from where the grade is that they're trying to establish down to what it was before. And you know, the homeowner said that this was a very um, steep and dangerous, you know, uh, uh, kind of traver traversal through here, um, which I don't doubt. Uh, as far as resource areas here, um, I don't believe this is in floodplain, but it is within a 25 foot riverbank and it's also within a hundred foot to bank, uh, which is, those are two separate resource areas. Um, so we'll just kind of continue flipping through these uh, photos real quick. I issued the, in the enforcement order, you know, the day that I went out on the site, you can kind of see the channel here uh, with the concrete wall uh, and that just drops down directly adjacent to the fence. I guess they missed the erosion control part, huh? Well, yeah, they missed the erosion control part. Yeah. Let's see what else we've got. Um, and they're just using, you know, whatever material they can find to, 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 to make the frame for the wall. Um, so yeah, this is what they're dealing with. Uh, so this is going to have to be removed, um, period, because it's just not, it's just not, um, this type of construction, even if, even if it were permitted, uh, this, this, uh, this quality is not something that, that, that we can allow to, to happen. So, um, at, at a minimum, we need to restore this to, to add it as it was. And then if they want to apply for, uh, a, a notice of intent to do, uh, the same construction, but in a, in an approved manner that may be permissible, but the first step is to, to remove the existing, uh, uh construction here and, and return it to how it was before. And then, and then it may be permissible to, 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 to raise that grade. <laughs> Excuse me. I guess that's really it. You're not going to get many more uh, there. I have more pictures on the on, online if you want to check them out, but you guys, I think get the gist here. So that's kind of what we're dealing with, with this enforcement order. So in this case, we would need to vote to ratify your enforcement order. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, yes, you do. Any questions at all, commissioners? Mm. I entertain a vote then. I mean, an entertain a motion rather. Sorry to ratify mm. the enforcement order. I make a motion to ratify the enforcement order on 411 Warren Avenue. I second that. Seconded by Sharifa, thank you. Um, so the motion has been made and seconded. A roll call vote, please. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Map, aye. Boris, aye. So it's been ratified. And you will and reach out. You will reach out to her to. Yeah, I'll try to make contact again, and uh, you know, try to see if they can come to the October meeting. Did you? All have right. Any, um, you seem to have any issues with translation need. Uh, no, uh, she she spoke English well enough. I mean, I, I had conversations with her on the site the day that we were all out there. It wasn't just me. I was out there with uh, multiple members of the building department. The the fire chief was out there, um, you know, health health inspectors. So it was like the whole deal. Thank you. And the last item on the agenda is 19 Otis Street, the, the pergola. Yes, and uh, I requested that uh, Mr. Azende uh, attend the meeting tonight. He was in the attendees uh, earlier. I think he's just left. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I, I still want to have a discussion with the commission briefly today um, about this item. Uh, this is a, 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 an enforcement order that was initially issued in April. Uh, to date, uh, to my knowledge, not a single like first step has been taken by uh, the property owner to address this after multiple uh, times of us reaching out, uh, trying to explain what the next steps are. Um, I'm under the impression that, and this has been ex expressly communicated to me as well, but that they, that they don't have the funds to do this work now. Um, in the interest of trying to keep this moving forward, um, 
and uh, you know, and recognizing that the alternative to this is uh, getting the law department involved and putting a lien against the the property and maybe potentially having the city actually do this restoration work because it does cross over into the city's uh, property and then you know passing that cost back on to the property owner. Before we get to that point, um, I'm working with the law department. I had multiple meetings with uh, different attorneys with the city um, and they've suggested uh, that the next step that we do is have the property owner sign a voluntary compliance agreement. Uh, I have a draft of that uh, here uh, that I put up in the file. Um, basically outlining what steps that are required for this restoration, all the way from initially making contact with, you know, a, a certified professional to do the delineations and review uh, the property, to developing a restoration plan, to actually implementing the work. Um, and uh, the, the attorney that I've spoken to has suggested that we, as a commission, uh, decide what kind of timelines that we want to include uh, in this document and hold the uh, the property owner to. Um, and again, this is a voluntary compliance agreement. We cannot force them to sign this. Uh, but basically, I guess I could, first off, I mean, I got, I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen share so you guys can see it. Um, and just, I, I'll read over it as well, just for the record. So this is the draft. Uh, and this is already kind of tailored to this uh, specific uh, violation. So I've already kind of filled out most of this. Uh, and then I'll, after I read through this, we can go through and maybe hammer out a tentative timeline that we want to uh, include on here. So it reads, on April 27, uh, 2023, a code enforcement officer from the Department of Planning and Economic Deve Development initiated a complaint regarding the property located at 19 Otis Street, Brockton, Massachusetts, 02302. Here and after referred to as the property. Uh, Mr. Azende is the owner of the property. Uh, here and after referred to as the owner. Uh, owner acknowledges that the property is in violation of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, uh, MGLC Chapter 131, Section 40. Uh, owner received notice of violations on April 27th, 2023, May 30th, 2023, August 17th, 2023. Owner agrees to, to perform the following uh, within blank days of this agreement. So I'm going to stop there. Those three dates that I included were dates that I expressly issued a copy of the enforcement order, not not points of contact, uh, but those are three different times that I issued the enforcement order. Uh, just you know, I just sent a copy those those last two dates. Okay, so the three or the, the four steps that we are requiring in this uh, voluntary compliance agreement is one: employ a professional wetland scientist, environmental scientist, environmental engineer uh, to identify property boundaries, resource areas, and document alterations to those resource areas by a given date. Number two, work with that professional to uh, develop a restoration plan, including a sequence and schedule of restoration to return the altered areas to conditions prior to the construction activities. Um, three, file a notice of intent with the Brockton Conservation Commission to permit implemented implementation of the restoration plan by fill in the date, uh, remove the unpermitted construction on city-owned property, and complete the permitted restoration of Salisbury Brook by blank. Uh, a note on that last point. Normally, once an, a notice of intent is filed, uh, outside of that three-year window, the commission doesn't really have any uh, any uh, any any authority to dictate when that work is done, because this is a well, city. Uh, I'm sorry. What three-year window? Um, an, an, an order of conditions that is that is uh, granted with notice of intent is valid for three years. Uh, but okay. normally, the person who's filing notice of intent wants to do that work, right? So okay. they have a they have a they they have a reason to be to be doing that. If the, theoretically, they could just sit on file notice of intent and then just sit on it for three years. Um, yep. Because this is a, a a property violation as well, where they've gone across property lines. This is a city-owned parcel. As a city representative, uh, we as the city can can dictate that we want this to be resolved by a certain time period before the city will take action. So that's why this is involved here, and this may not be uh, relevant to all uh, future things with voluntary compliance, but I think that's something that's relevant for this one. Um, and then finally, it kind of ends with the owner has read and understands the terms of the agreement. Owner agrees that failure to comply with terms of this agreement will result in a judgment, including but not limited to fines and penalties to be entered against the owner by a court of competent jurisdiction. So I was hoping to have this conversation with uh, Mr. Azende tonight and, and, and say that we've kind of talked about what the next steps are on a, on a legal level. This is kind of our last ditch effort to to reach out and, and work with the the homeowner uh, before we we get to that point. So 
I guess my question is, uh, I can reach out and kind of try to deliver this to them uh, at a later date, but I would like to know what what the time frame that we want for this. Um, one thing that we can do with this is if if finances are a concern, uh, you know, we can grant, you know, however much time that the commission is comfortable with to to allow them to maybe save money uh, and, and allow them to do this work. I'm not optimistic that that's going to happen, but you know, that's where we can decide how lenient we want to be with this time um, that we allow here because they haven't done even the first smallest step that we've asked them to do over the last, you know, uh, five months. Um, I'm less, uh, less willing to, to, to give a, a large extension here. Um, but theoretically, you know, in another context, it could be, oh, we'll give you a year to, to kind of gather the, the money that you need to, to, to do this work. I don't think a year is necessary here, um, but again, that's really kind of up to the commission. A quick question. So, a quick question. Do yeah. you know if Mr. Resendi is the homeowner or is he a tenant there? No, he's 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 the property owner. He's a property owner, so he does yeah. own the actual. He owns the he owns the house and the lot. Yeah. So uh, the the dates that we have to outline here are how much time do we want to uh, give them to actually contact a you know an environmental scientist someone this is the thing that we've been asking them to do for the last five months how much how much time do we want to give them and have that written down here uh the second one is when do we want to require that they file a notice of intent and then the third is after the notice of intent is filed how long before we require that all of this work is completed mm -hmm. can i also ask one other question yeah is it possible to offer, let the city do the work and let's put a lien against your property as an option instead if he doesn't want to go through getting in touch with people to do it? Is that I'm, possible as an option? I, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I can talk to the attorney about that. That's 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 the next step, right? So if this doesn't work, but but also if he's not willing to sign this document and 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 try to put in the effort, uh, then that's what we're going to do next anyway. So if that is just what he would be wanting to do, then that's certainly an option. So uh, I can convey that when I uh, contact him about filling you know, or signing this document. Uh, but this is just basically, uh, and, and you know, if we go that route, I'll make note of that interaction, you know, for when we take this to a judge. Um, but again, th this document is kind of like, you know, we've done everything we can and we, we, we've we tried to be reasonable and they're just not willing to work with us. And this is just another step of documenting that that chain of action uh, so we can make that argument before a judge. I, um, I'm just, but I'm just but yeah, I think we can we can make we can make that offer and say, hey, if you if you want to just wipe your hands of this, that's fine. Oh, we'll we'll take care of it through the city and and and, and just put a lien on the property. So because and for some people, it's overwhelming to go about and speak to all these professionals and get all these pieces of paper together that all have to, you know, get all those T's and, you know, crossed and yeah. I's dotted. And for people that aren't comfortable, you know, necessarily with the language and everything, that might be overwhelming. And it might be easier just to say, you know what, you do it. And well, I, I, you know. but I mean, but I think they would be just as uncomfortable with the whole lean process. They're not going to understand that either. I guess to me, I don't know. there has to be some accountability. So Absolutely. if we've gone through giving these enforcement orders, explaining what this process is, and no action has been taken. Again, I'm assuming we've done this in their native language. We've, you know, we've kind of gone above and beyond with all of these communications. At what point does accountability come into play? Because now we're babysitting. Yeah. So, I, I mean, to me, yeah. you're a homeowner. There's things, I mean, they had the money to build what they did right okay so then how so you did this incorrectly uninformed totally get it understand because it could happen to anybody because not everyone is you know equipped or educated on the wetlands protection act and what falls and what i give anybody that because again i wouldn't have known it if i didn't sit on this commission in the detail that i do as well but at what point do we apply accountability right. so I'm okay with, like you said, Kyle, this being the last ditch and saying, okay, by this date, we need you to at least do 
some of these steps. Something has to be done. And then an NOI and this whole process, as long as that's thoroughly communicated and explained that this is the option or the other option is there'll be a lien put on your house. I'm not sure how what people understand about a lien being put on your home by the city, but that's a process also. So the per they're going to have to go through a process regardless to how this ends up. They can not sign and ignore it and the lien gets put on, or they can work with the commission and work with the planning department to try to feasibly outline a game plan to help them to be able to afford what it is that's been done that needs to be taken care of. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, this Sorry, this is a property that the, the owner typically has somebody with him that's a, a young woman or a woman that speaks to him. Yeah, right? I think is his that sister the... normally helps translate on our meetings. But yeah, so I, yeah, I agree with Ruby. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe that the... Ruby, you muted yourself. Sorry, I believe the resources are there because we've pointed people in the right direction. We've, there are tons of people in the community that, that I'm sure they, I mean, that they probably have access to that can help them through, you know, certain processes. Again, they hired contractors to build out what was done in the work that, and somebody got paid to do that work. The issue is that you did the work and it wasn't, you know, it, it, did, it, it, it crossed some lines that now it needs to be restored and fixed in the way it should be. And it's work that should have never been done. So again, we're just trying to correct uh, a mistake that was done, but in the same token, ignoring it is not helping. Um, now saying that there's a communication gap in the process is oh. not helping also. So at the end of the day, I think this being the last ditch effort, we, if we iron out these dates and then they refuse to sign it, then the city has no choice but to do the lien process. And again, they're either going to go through this process and we and we try to help them as much as possible. You know, like you said, Kyle, if we gave them a year to get the finance and they're a homeowner, equity comes into a home. you got to prioritize. you got to you know what I mean? I, I feel like as a homeowner, you have to take the responsibility and accountability to fix the mistake that was done. However you have to do go about it, it still has to get done. Okay. Yeah. What about timeline for number four? Do you think one year from now is is too short? Well, I don't think it's too short. I mean, I, I mean... I to think to, to fund the entire thing, I mean, I don't know what their finances look like, but but I I I I'm even hesitant to say a year for this because, like, I yeah, mean, I I, I think a year is, is probably have realistic. Have but, well, but, why but, yeah. couldn't we have at least uh, got in touch with an environmental scientist by the November meeting? That All right, yeah, let's let's step up that way. So let's start at the beginning. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so. so by November, they need to have they need to come with, to us with with information about who they've contacted and and what they're working on. Mm -hmm. All right, that would be November fifteenth. November okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then okay. that person would help them to get the plan together, uh, which should be by the following month. No. Well, so so to 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 do the the restoration plan and, and even so, all we're doing in number one is requiring that they prove to us that they called someone and made contact. Correct. You have to pay for a restoration plan. So, right. you know, if, if that's a thing, I mean, again, this has been since April, uh, and so I, I don't know how lenient we want to be with this, you know. But I think that, um, I, I you know, if we're trying to let them take some time to save some money or, or do whatever they need to do, as Ruby said, to, to kind of, you know, fix this. Uh, maybe we, maybe this it's not like the December meeting. I, I don't know. I, what, are, what are your something thoughts? Something that can be restored in, in parts or pieces. So if we give them till November to contact an environmental scientist and get a scope of work. And then by say January to have made some initial progress um to towards the restoration of this area either remove something or um, so i think yeah. that you probably don't want to piecemeal the actual work of this because right. uh you know you want to put the origin controls in take out the, the the unpermitted construction and restore the area all in one go rather than you yeah. know kind of doing it over the course of six months but 
I, I, I think that maybe, yeah, like you might be on something. Maybe we, uh, I can rephrase the way that this is set up and say, uh, get a scope of work from this person, from this organization. And mm -hmm. then, you know, whatever, you know, and if they, if they quote you $3,000 for, you know, the restoration plan or whatever it is, um, you know, maybe they can do payments on that or something, some sort of uh, incremental right. payment mm -hmm. on, on that, but they have to show us that, right? Mm -hmm. Um right. And but I think that, the that, that end been, been result been should be by April of next year. They so should have they... had something done. Okay, so I think that, I think that's a fair point. So maybe yeah. at the at beginning in April, like there needs to be uh, what like actual construction on the ground occurring. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. by April it should be. I think by April it should be completed, done. Well, I mean, like you know, with 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 the winter and stuff. I mean, that's kind of out of season as far as when you're going to be doing restoration work. I mean, I, I'm not sure what would be required for the restoration plan, but if plants need to be established there, uh, that's pretty early in the year. Um, yeah. But I think that like oh, April bad. is a year after it occurred. They, they did all this work before April this past year, you know? So right. I think that requiring that, 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 the, that the plan begin by April, I think it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, the actual construction, like the, the, re the restoration plan be implemented on the ground by April, I think is reasonable. Okay. So you would, yep. so you would put another three and a half in there. That would be implementation and progress. And then, is that what you're saying? To have like a middle one between filing the notice of intent and actually getting it completed. That you you have progress by a certain date. Yeah, I th I, I I think so. I, I yeah, I think that. Um... We can say they can, well, but but again, I don't want to. I, I don't know that we need to. I might just rephrase number four. I don't want to have a big window of time between when they start mm -hmm. construction and when they have to be done because oh, once the first they start, step they is getting an environmental scientist. If they haven't even done that by November, we'll know whether they have any. The rest of it, you got it, it. absolutely. And at that point, yep. it, if they haven't even done that, then that's when I think you should tell them that legal action will have to be done. Okay, so I guess the, just a clarification point. Are we going to hold them to each of these things rather than just the whole thing at the end? I, I think the the, the, I, the vibe that I'm getting is, yeah, we want to make sure by November that they pr provide us proof or we're going to, you know, refer mm -hmm. to the law department. Yeah, I don't want to wait till all the way April. Yeah, and they haven't yeah I, I, I don't either. I don't want to wait yeah. another yeah. year to give them mm -hmm. the time and then they just don't do anything for a year. Then we're kind of and stuck. And I agree with Ruby. If they had the money to pay for that and that was not cheap. Uh, uh -huh. they, then they certainly can find the money for an environmental scientist, you know. Okay, so so if you think uh, November fifth for when they have to provide proof that they've contacted someone, how long do we mm -hmm. want them uh, to? Because a notice of intent, you know, depending on the restoration plan, like even under best case and circumstances, that can take a few months to kind of get put together. Um, have to have all the butters and all that stuff, and, and well, then right, we'll you know, say so February, um, because that will get you through the holiday months. You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, notice to the abutters and stuff. The holidays can be busy for some people. Yeah. And that's so, being generous. So so would you expect maybe by um, February for number two or? Well, like for February. three, for, 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 for the filing, right? Or because... Okay. The restoration plan is all you really need for the filing. If they are able to get the restoration plan, like the filing is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. The restoration plan is right. a big hang up on that. Notice right. costs money, doesn't it, to file the notice of intent? Yeah, there is a filing fee, but there's also the 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 the, the paying for a restoration the restoration plan, plan. The right? Restoration plan. Yeah, that's not so. True. Ideally, could they can get a plan by March, right? A full plan to know how to manage everything. Yeah, I think March is a good deadline. I feel like you, okay. know, maybe you said February, but with the holidays and stuff, I mean, people are busy and, you know, right. I get it. So I think if they can get a plan by March, then we'll know that they're serious about actually doing the restoration work if they can right. get a plan developed. So that'd be March. So if they develop a plan and have that submitted by March, how long do you want to give them to get that For work implementation done. to get the work done then yeah. maybe we give them the an additional 90 days and that'll put us in june and then that way everything that should be enough time for everything to be done at that point right is june june would be reasonable from a march if we have a restoration plan together in march 
Yeah, I, I, yes, I, I think conceivably that could be done, but you have to like make sure you hire contractors that have availability to do the work. I, I think that maybe if we do a March deadline for the filing, we require that the work be completed in that calendar year. Uh, you know. Before, okay. Yeah. Or, then that's or, fine. Or move it up. You know, uh, before like his construction season kind of dies. Uh, you know, November or or whatever time frame. Okay. But, you know, and, and because the idea here is not also just to hey, you got to you know. Like we want to be, we want, we still want to work with them. The goal here is voluntary right. compliance, right? So Correct. I feel like if we say March is when you have to give us a plan, uh, you have the rest of the rest of the year, the rest of the calendar year the to yep. get the work done. I that's think that's fair. And fall. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. Can you yep. have that uh, file a notice of intent with the plan? Can you put those together for March? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it would be. It would be a notice of intent to even do that because they, they can't just start the restoration work. The restoration work right. itself has to be permitted. Yeah, so two and three could go together for March and then the rest, and then... Would yeah, and two and three can be put together. I don't have a deadline for two because it's kind of involved in three, so I can just reword that. Okay. And then within a year for the final... Do we need to make any motions on this? Uh, no, I don't believe so. It was just kind of what what kind of you know deadline that we wanted to thought was reasonable and to kind of give to the uh, to the property owner. So no now, no no motion or anything. Do you anticipate having this little voluntary compliance agreement like kind of standardized that could be used for like any um, any order? Yeah, that's that's kind of the goal here. So the the the, the large okay. l long term goal is you know uh, we're going to try to start documenting, um, and doing a better job of, of kind of building a case, a legal case, in case things get to this point uh, that we have a solid legal argument to take to a judge. So this is a yeah. part of that, and this is not just with the conservation commission, but it's something that the city more broadly is kind of considering uh, uh, for all their code enforcement. <laughs> I think it's good. It's a good move forward. Okay. Well, that's all I've got for this. Thank you for your patience tonight. Um, we, we made it. This is a long one. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Oy. Yeah. <laughs> with, a lot of, with a lot of continuances. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping we'd we actually have a full agenda out, in October but... already. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Got a job. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh yes, the motion thanks. to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> I second the motion. <laughs> Anybody in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, <laughs> aye. Aye. Joycey, aye. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Will.